Defining Duke is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. So instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Duke. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Duke. Just go to Indeed.com slash Duke and support the show by saying you heard about it here on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Duke. Terms and conditions apply need to hire you need indeed defining duke an xbox podcast is brought to you by well you if you want to learn how to support the show go to patreon.com slash last stand media Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. Welcome to episode 154 of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. Today, I am joined by Cog Kringle himself, Lord Cognito. How are we doing today? Oh, that shirt. Hold on. I can't even finish that. Oh, that shirt. Okay, we're repping both of them here. Both the Yakuza protagonists. I wish they had a better haircut, though, man. I know. Yeah, I got a little whack. Yeah. I'm not going to front like after playing like, I mean, like a Dragon Gate in with the fly look and the smooth yeah. James Bond. I'm like, I'm not yeah. feeling the hair. I'm not, over and stuff. Yeah. That's- now, you, you know why, though, right? No, I haven't played it yet. Oh, I'll talk when we get to it. <laughs> but, yeah, I but, uh, it yet, but yeah, look, man, I, I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. He's like, I feel like it's setting him up for like if he has a moment in the eighth game where he kind of mm. like slicks his hair back like old times and oh, gets I back that. to business. I feel like that's what's going to happen. He looks I, way too whack to be like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm was... MC. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I mean, obviously, I'm actually, I'm actually getting over a, a little bit of a cold. I, I, mm. I had like a little cold, little sinusy thing going yeah. on. But for the most part, I'm, I'm much better than when I was. And then uh, I <laughs> shot to everybody. You know, I, I put up a little picture. I rarely do it. But I wanted because everybody. I'm like, you know, I told I met well, my mom, Mama Cox. So I'm like, you know, everyone in the community knows you, you know, through me. Right? And she's like, <laughs> really? And I'm like, yeah, they know all the stories of me, you, you King and Saul back in the day in the crib. <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna put some up, put this up, and I guarantee you, there will be some references to it, and it yeah. happened. And people, yeah. I'll show her. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> so she started laughing. So I took her out to dinner. We haven't seen each other in a while oh, since my um, hospitalization. And um, she wanted to be on a, a side of caution after everything out, yes. of, out of respect. So we did that. And then, uh, yeah, I took her out to dinner. And it, it was really cool just to catch up, you know, be back, be back in the city and, and just talk with uh, Mama Cog and all that. You know, you got to appreciate those moments. That's what I feel. Absolutely, bro. Well, uh, yeah, that, that picture was sweet. It, it made Thank me happy you. to see. So yeah, I saw your comment. I saw your comment. I was like, yeah. oh, man, he saw it. <laughs> That's what's yeah. up. How you been, man? What's going on? That winding down? You know, yeah, holidays? This is our, our last show of the year. I mean, technically, like you, for those listening and aren't caught up with how we do things at LSM, like while we're away, we're not away. So we're going to be off for like three weeks. But while we're gone, there will be uh, all new episodes coming out for both DD and DDU. So you will not miss a beat here. Same across punching up, same across like sacred symbols. Like we're covered across the board. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. I won't lie. I, I've been on the Mr. Maddie and retro rebound front, just producing dozens of videos in advance. And you know, the problem is dude, like <laughs> Laley pointed this out to me is like, I don't do it simple. So like a lot of this stuff I'm putting out, is like some of my best work and I'm not even exaggerating like Retro Rebound is about to do a, a, a I can say it now because by the time this goes out but it'll probably be out. like a Christmas special okay. that we took two months to work on um, I had like a massive stack of like 16 games next to me that I was going through and it's like a real labor of love and like almost my own kind of Christmas movie oh, with like dope. a message at the end like I just yeah, I was like really proud of it and like I got like a whole Bethesda kind of video essay about how like Skyrim kind of I put this in quotes ruined them mm-hmm. um, and and I think it's like a more thoughtful critique of them than like the typical like change your engine bro type of <laughs> argument that they get um, yeah. and so like I'm just doing more thoughtful stuff which is great because I think the audience benefits from it I think the conversation benefits from it I think it's it resonates more um, it's less of that like oh here's like the news beat for the day um, 
but it takes way more time. Yeah. And so I'm doing that times like 12. Like we're, we're, we're producing 12 Mr. Matty videos for while I'm away wow. for a week and then two a week for Retro Rebound. I, I, much like what we do here at LSM, I don't like to miss a beat. And so speaking of which, on top of that, we were last week, we did like four DDs in a row. Yeah. We've, we've, you know, and that's partially on us. We, we waited a little bit longer for yeah. that. But, you know, we, there were certain things with Xbox's conversation we had to wait to develop, especially since we knew they'd be at the Game Awards that we were like, we can't really record these things mm-hmm. like that. So um, now we have a better idea of everything and we were able to get all of that in the can. And so, yeah, it's been definitely that uh, sort of uh, Groundhog's Day, like they're just blurring into the last. And uh, it's it's been a little weird, but it's now at the finish line. It's like, OK, I just got to muster up that last bit of energy. I got like five video edits to go here and uh, I'm hoping to be done completely with my video work by the 15th. We also hit a, a pretty big milestone for our game. Uh, it's now at pre-alpha. So um, like like we had expected. Yeah, we hit our, our, our December 12th deadline and we hit pre-alpha. So we're good. Um, so that feels good. Our next step is alpha in about like half a year or so. So I'm feeling really good about that. Like putting that in the rear view for, for a couple of days while I focus on the video stuff and then get to some writing um, during my break. So yeah, it's just been a lot, but uh, it's been gratifying because it's like, so many creative juices flowing that I'm definitely going to just need the time to, to recharge. But yeah, it's, it's been a lot for sure. And so um, that's how I'm doing really long with it, but that's how I'm doing. Got a lot going on. Almost there, almost there. To, so we can all decompress both of us much needed rest. Yeah. hundred percent. I think when we get that time off, um, it lets us become better creators. You know, you, yeah. I always feel like I come back sharp as attack for the first like four months. It's, uh, this year, I think I did a really good job pacing myself. And I, I'm not trying to scratch my own back too hard here. Just I think that is like my Achilles heels. I go so hard when I come back that by like June, after that first wave of all the stuff that's happened throughout the year, it's like, oh, my God, I got another half year to go. Uh, but this time, I think I did a good job pacing myself, especially with the move where I was I was pretty pleased with yeah. my energy reserves come November. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot. You got a lot going on. I forgot the move is huge, man. That was a huge yeah. whole world transition that that's something not i had i have not done that often but when you have it's a shift that, it's a that, major shift yeah. first time doing it so yeah like i was pretty proud of myself i was talking to my programmer because he was like what's one thing you're proud of personally this year i'm like the fact that i was able to move and like not lose a step on anything uh i was pretty happy with i was like that i expected at some point in the road i was gonna miss a beat and i was like the fact that i didn't and then we just led straight into starfield and reviewing yeah. that was uh Whew pretty intense but that was you know mm-hmm. and so i love to do it you know i do it not not because i have to because i want to so no i'm very thankful for that salute salute um what i'm also thankful for cog is our it's audience uh, yeah. we have lots of write-ins this week yeah. uh, lots of holiday cheer lots of thanks from our audience we appreciate those of you who've been listening to our show year round um we also want to thank spotify uh, just as a little special shout out to them because you can see the little box in the background from cog um we did know a holiday gift was on the way from them and uh, they provided us like a, a little torch, some marshmallows, some chocolate. They gave us a blanket. They're like cuddle up, get warm with someone. I was like, wow, mm-hmm. this is so cozy. So yeah, Spotify continues to hook up the Dukes and heading into 2024. I mean, uh, who knows what's in store for us? But uh, just again, special shout out to them. Um, I should make sure it's clear that like no money is changing hands or yes. anything in this. It's just more so like. They wanted us to be a partner. We're the only partner in the LSM family for Spotify, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so man. we thought, hey, they're going to scratch our back. Help yeah. us out on the audio front. Let's scratch their back. Because uh, that's our, our biggest point of weakness for those yes. who want to look at the business side. Like YouTube side, pretty goddamn strong. On our audio side, like we're okay. Like we could definitely do better, which again, thanks to all of you. We got to this point from all yes. the reviews and everything, More like just too. really getting us there. And so mm-hmm. starting at the top of the new year, we'll go back to rev- reading the, the mobile reviews and everything. I apologize that there's been a bit of a delay on that. I'll go back to to bothering you all. <laughs> shout out to Spotify. Uh, shout out to all the patrons. If you want to support us some more, patreon.com slash last stand media. 16,000 plus of you are, are over there. We post a thread every week. Uh, you can submit your questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, corrections, even which we have some. I have to submit my own correction about myself as well. Uh, but yeah, the, we, you can get involved there. You can get access to Defying Duke Ultimate, Sacred Symbols Plus, uh, all our great shows there. Um, and then if you want to wait for free feeds, we're on YouTube.com slash Last Day Media, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, all that cool stuff. You can find us on any audio video platform out there. Just come listen to the word of the Dukes. Yeah, come into the realm of the Dukes. All right, Cog, let's start off with the right in here. Got a couple corrections here and then we'll get into some fun updates. 
Mark Underwood writes, hey, Dukes, just a small correction here. And as one of the few Europeans here, I thought I should have mentioned it. On the previous podcast, Maddie referenced Arcane Leon as being right there when saying the new Blade game. I don't care. It will be Game Pass Day 1 if it's exclusive. Leon and Paris are 289 miles away from each other. Maybe being a bit picky, but it perked my ears. Cheers, guys. And this is fair. I'm an American. I have no idea what the hell exactly. I'm talking about on that front. Uh, you are absolutely right as a European to come in and correct me. We'll allow that one, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> salute, salute for, for checking us on the geography lesson. For absolutely, sure. absolutely. I do think it's going to be their own fantastical version Woo! of pair. And so maybe you'll see the elements blur of what's Ooh. nearby oh. their office, but we'll see. We'll can't see. wait, can't wait. We will see. Don Otaku writes in, What up, Method Maddie and Ghostface Cog? I need to correct you all from last week as I'm disappointed in the reporting you guys did on the Wu-Tang Clan game. You guys kept calling it a beat-em-up, but it is not that at all. It is an action RPG, according to Brass Lion's website. Also on the website, you can get info on the three founders of Brass Lion who have worked on Def Jam Vendetta, Sleeping Dogs, Mass Effect 3 slash Andromeda, which is the lead combat designer, Singularity, Skyrim, and Fallout 3. I just want everyone to put some respect on this game because it's looking to be bigger than most would think. Have a how to cancel your last stand media subscription kind of day. (laughs) So extra. Yeah, IG, IGN, man. What What is going on with that? Oh, wow. man. They, they, they and so the thing is, they do it a bunch beforehand. I they saw, have, like, they, they did have. it for a ton. But mm-hmm. I was like, you don't do it at Game Pass. You know the conversation. Like, but you know how this is going to go. Well, we like, talked about it, right? But yeah, it, 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 there's a part genius to it because they know people are going to react to this. They, they yeah, know a they certain can. subset of people are going to react. And it, it, it takes those who are not going to click. A lot of strength. <laughs> they know what they do, bro. But to, to it's the, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, we we know what's going on. We know what's yeah. going on. But um, to, to to the dawn. Um, yeah, no. So shout out to the correction. Um, I think we at the news we had at the time it did say melee on the article that we had. It did say melee, but it is looks like it's an action RPG. You know, yeah. and I, you know, hopefully, you know, much bigger than we think. And you know, I, I guess. We have to admit it's still melee focused. It's it, it's far as the the action is concerned. Like Donald, it's just straw manning as a touch of here. course I'm, of I'm course you, Don. like the, you know the, there, there's like one extra layer on top of it all like action beat them up like yes. we're we're in the same pocket like if you called diablo 4 mm-hmm. a beat them up i'd get what you're saying you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, I, can't, I think i would get it right <laughs> am i crazy for that the audience will let me know but like i'm gonna stand on my square just mildly so like not full on the business but like mildly so like i got one foot on the line of the square saying like well now hold on hold on now yeah you know, we're kind of in the same ballpark in the same here. pocket because the way yeah. you act like it was a gross mischaracterization yeah. like, <laughs> I was just like, like oh, a puzzle game man <laughs> yeah <laughs> Come on, Don. <laughs> Play Tetris with Method Man and RZA. <laughs> I'm like, no, it said melee. So we gonna throw beat up. But to, to his point, um, and also, I mean, to our point, when I saw the some of them worked on Def Jam Vendetta, which is one of mm. the classics. Bro, so that's I'm a in, goat. yeah, bro, that's a ghost. So I'm I'm in that pocket. But yeah, this is tre- tremendous. Uh, resumes and pedigree that they got going on. So good. Hopefully, it's a bigger game in the same pocket. Yeah. Lead combat designer of Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda is genuinely exciting. Those games may get a lot of flack. I've always loved Mass Effect 3, and I have always said that Andromeda's combat kicks ass, dude. Oh, that, that combat is so good. So, yeah. like, yeah, knowing that the lead combat designer for that's working on it, that's I, it's almost like a guarantee it's going to be good because, yeah. like, that those are like the best parts of both those games, bro. So, absolutely, yes. Yeah, one thing, me, me and Hole goes hard for Andromeda. But one thing I will give him was that combat, that planet exploration, I felt was kind of like the best of the series. I didn't like anything else about the game, but I had to give, uh, sort of narratively, but I have to give it that. Mass Effect 3, we already know. Yeah, it was, it was taking yeah. the Mass Effect 1 formula and really modernizing in a, in a big way. And Andromeda had a ton of potential. That's why I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm low-key hopeful for what they're going to do for the new Mass Effect game, because I, I feel like they kind of understood like where they screwed up. And I mean, they had to make that game. It, it's, it's in the same pocket as it's like where modern warfare three is where modern warfare three in this really weird way is kind of impressive because they had to make it in like 16, 18 yeah, months. Yeah. And same thing with Andromeda. Like they had to make that game entirely in like 18 months. And mm-hmm. that's a big game with a lot going on in it for 18 months. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's impressive in a weird way, but obviously standing on its own compared to the rest of the series. It's not mm-hmm. that great. No doubt. Uh, last little correction here, not a write in. I just wanted to submit it myself. I called the Sega games. Uh, not only in my own video, but also here on the show, uh, remakes and their reboots. 
which is Burrow. a welcome surprise, might which I add. More yeah, yeah like yeah. that's even like sex is being dangerous oh, right now, man. Like, yeah, they going, they touching the, like the the Bible versus the old. They going in the crazy touching things that are supposedly sacred. So these are gonna be like new takes, which yes. I'm I'm very excited Ooh. about because now that says to me like we'll get into Gene Park's interview with uh, Sega on the Washington Post, which is phenomenal. Oh, Gene uh, but, killed it. But yeah, absolutely. But like now I get more of what he's saying when he, when, when uh, Shuji Itsumi was like, oh yeah, like people can appreciate Jet Set now. And I was thinking like, oh, they're going to just remake it. Like that makes sense. It's a little safe. They're like, oh no, they're making a whole new one from the ground up. I'm like, okay, okay. So like, just wanted to make sure that was out there for those who took my word and ran with it. Uh, it's actually a reboot. They are rebooting five of their series and We'll talk about some more. They may be rebooting if oh, some yeah. uh, trademark listings are anything to go by. Ooh. Let's start off with Starfield, though. Everyone's favorite topic. There's been a lot of updates posted on Starfield's Reddit. Um, this one comes from Bethesda Game Studios. In an otherwise more broad post, I wanted to pick out the key quote here. They said, we're hard at work on many new features you've asked for, from city maps to mod support to all new ways of traveling. Stay tuned. These will be rolling out with a regular cadence of fixes and updates we expect to have roughly every six weeks. If something can be done in a smaller hot fix in between, like the asteroid, we feel it's safe. We'll get one of those out as well. Safe is the key here. We do take a lot of time to test even the smallest change in a game this large and dynamic. So, Cog, I uh, I thought that, number one, this is like kind of what I was bitching about last week with the roadmap. I'm like, okay, we're like almost there. Even if some of my roadmap and support examples, like I'll call myself out again on this. We're kind of bad. I think I use cyberpunk as an example. And someone mentioned in the comments. So true. They're like, Maddie, the, the roadmap is literally like a fucking line with like update 1.2. I'm like, yeah, that shit sucked. Like now that I think about it, I'm thinking I'm caught up in the zeitgeist a little too much on that. Yeah, one, you, so. you was going hard on him last week. I was yeah. like, damn, he going. <laughs> yeah, that was fair. That was fair. <laughs> Cog, next time I'm drowning like that, I'm expecting you to throw me a line to get me no, out of that. I, I did, because I was like, bro, we do know Sad Park was broken at launch, and we do yeah. know I found what the other game was. But next time, I, just slap me away. <laughs> slap me away. I was way too in my feelings. You were using feelings. I was like, I'm going to let him rock. But yeah. but it was one other joint. It was, you had two game comparisons. It was Sad Park was another I game. I said Baldur's Gate. And Baldur's yes. Gate was like a little just, bit unfair, because I had three years of early access. Just so started. just I suck at my job, apparently, <laughs> nah, is what nah, I'm nah, finding nah, out nah, this nah, episode. Nah, nah, nah. Um but I yeah, just know what your heart wanted. That, that you, your heart. Yeah, really I want a really fucking roadmap. <laughs> I, want, I want a roadmap, Bethesda. <laughs> right? And it Fair looks enough. like we are getting there. We're close. We have an idea, some stuff to come. We knew about the city maps. We knew about modding. I want your thoughts on this new way of traveling. What do you think this means? Is this on foot? Is this in space? Does this mean overhauls in the design of Starfield? Because this has been the loudest part of the complaints surrounding the game. Not technical yeah. issues, but design when it comes to traveling. So I want to know for you, sir. What do you think this means? The fact that it's mentioned is a huge deal to me because yeah, I, I didn't thought for this soon. Yeah, I didn't, for that I expected this soon. I'm be honest, I didn't expect it unless it was going to come from the mod community because I'm like, mm. to me, I looked at it as a design choice to mask a limitation, right? Mm. Because out of all the complaints that I feel that everyone have, and you have been very consistent with when we do all our, you know, do ultimates and our breakdowns and, and spoiler casts is, you know, in reference to the fast travel, how that disconnects you and stuff like that. So having the travel, especially on planets, you know, that you doing a lot of this <laughs> and jump packing in a lot of this, right? Let's be right. And don't get me wrong. I'm a confession. I'm a scanning dude. I'm a dude that I got the scanner. I, I'm doing the research. I'm not. Re- I yes, got that. Sir. I got that's like a lot of no man's sky in me. Mm-hmm. So I actually I'm one of the weird ones that find that relaxing in a weird way. And yeah, oh, I never okay. did much of the scanning, but I hear yeah, you. Some people, I'm like, I, I was talking to Locke, who doesn't like the game at all. And he was like mm-hmm. enjoying the scanning, which kind of surprised yeah, it, me. It's something about it. It's just like it, it, it hits some part of the synapse of, of like, OK, mm-hmm. I got this new Florida. I get these new materials. And then that if you get into that that leads you into the outpost lane. Cause mm-hmm. then the outpost lane, be, yo, you don't got these materials. You got, you don't got the zinc. You don't got the, it's it. Those two are intertwined. So yeah. anyway, back to your point with this, um, traveling, they better not get me excited. Cause I, I, I if I mean, you think it's what we think it is, it can't I, be. Are you asking me or do you want to give your thoughts? I'm right? asking you, you think it's, you think they really giving us a little punch buggy or make or something? I, I think it, a lot of people are thinking like, oh, this is it. Like they're going to fix the space travel. I don't think they're going to do that in a free update because mm-hmm. I think it goes way 
beyond that. And I think there's more intelligent ways to address that, like filling in the gaps in between on planets or filling in the gaps in between when you're in space or maybe right. opening up solar systems to travel could be one that mm. they can look into. I don't know if that's possible. Okay. Uh, where almost like Mass Effect, like you can fly around a solar system, but you go into a menu for the right. star systems. I think that would help okay. a lot if they had stuff in between. Yeah. That could go a long way. My thoughts though, my honest to God thoughts. Hey, what you think it is. Is I think it's going to be what a lot of people go, oh man, is I think it's going to be on foot. I think it'll help the game, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Because when you're on foot, part of Starfield's problem is like these areas are so few and far between mm -hmm. and there's nothing in between like there mm -hmm. was in their other games, which hurts Correct. the exploration. Correct. So they have one of two options. You can add something in between, which mm -hmm. I think will be a long term stretch goal. Mm -hmm. I think the immediate fix is you get something that gets you there quicker, whether that's a vehicle or as I've said since before launch, I think it's going to be a mech. I think you're going to be able to customize mechs mm, in Starfield because there's okay. so much lore about the mechs. The there's idea of, like of mech lore. getting in one and flying your way. Let's be honest. Like, I think that is like that nice in between of like you have the systems if you can build your own mech, like with the starship crafting, with this outpost crafting, or if you could an automaton being a uh, mm -hmm. automatron being a DLC of Fallout 4, where you could craft your own mech there. Like. The idea of being able to craft something that you can then get into and kind of like fly the surface on, mm. get around a little bit quicker. Okay. I don't okay. know if it'll be a vehicle per se. And the reason, but at the same time, here's the thing I'm going to play devil's advocate with myself. Oh, let's go, let's go. I think part of the reason that Starfield never gave you vehicles in the first place is either number one, they're playing it safe because remember, they didn't even put an FOV slider in because they were afraid nice. you get too much on screen. Yep. Yep. It's going to rip down the performance. performance. They've been very protective of the technical state of yes. this game, yes. which I think goes a bit overlooked with everything else that it has a problem with. Um, and perhaps they've been a little too safe with it, where I think the next step was like, if you put a vehicle down and you're going too fast, the game needs to take time to load stuff in in the distance. Too Lip, much data. Yep. It's just not going to run. And, and you're going to bog down the performance that way. So maybe mm. this has been a year of like getting the technical stuff settled down, no major features. So that's possible. Mm. But I don't know if like can can if you will, can the engine handle that? I'd like to say right. so, because I think the the starship fighting is very fast paced and there's a lot going on, especially when you do the light spoiler here when yes. I, I'm not going to say what happens, but like the end of the the Crimson Fleet story Fleet line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like an insane oh, my God. So amount of stuff going on. So yeah, Attic raves about I don't know too. if it, I think it's easy to, to to blame the engine at times when it's not even the main problem here. I think, it, again, it's a design thing. So that's where I sit on. I'm curious, like, where do you where do you fall? Like, where do you, so, what do you think they're going to do travel wise? Travel wise, my thing is I'm I'm being extremely conservative. I'm going mm -hmm. from a UI perspective because I cannot stand the star map. When I'm looking at, like, I got to, mm. I think, like, when you move the analog, it doesn't go all the way to the side. You got to use the directional pad. It's very yeah. clunky. It, it, it's like, you know, it took me a while. And then sometimes you go somewhere. I'm like, yo, I forgot what constellation you know that was what yeah like you want to go back to an old yeah. one it's, yeah. so it's like unless you made an outpost on it they don't even tell you what the eye because shout out to david jaffe i was watching a video he's playing starfield right and he was like could someone tell me what this icon means next to the planet and it basically meant like one meant that it's a city that's going to exist on a planet and the other one meant that you had an outpost and mm. did starfield tell us this no. no so the first thing was yeah clean up the ui with that and the other thing I have an issue is the city maps or lack thereof. Like when you go to a Kila or, you know, New Atlantis or whatever, whatever. Yeah, you hit the button, hit R, you know, in the map RB and then you see. But it's just to me, it's, it's very clunky. It's not mm. distinct on how to go between diff, different districts and stuff like that. So I want all of that cleaned up. Now, if you happen to give me some form of travel on a planet now you want to put a little, you know, like I said, a little buggy or you want to do so. Hey, I could use that. I, I could use that, especially with all the space you have us running between these waypoints that are great distances. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, when you're looking for your powers and stuff. So yeah, that's what I, that's, that's the, the, the big hope. We'll see how far that is. Part of me agrees with you though, that if they do the vehicles, they may say that for like, an expansion, a true DLC yeah, like kind of thing. It's so hard to imagine them like stitching together that sort of thing. And yeah. what the game came out in September, like 
three yeah. to six months. Like, yeah, it's, that's, I don't know. That's, yeah, I know that's that, that's realistic. So look, I am I am glad it's being talked about. I'm glad the cadence looks like it's going to be you know a little bit over um, every month, which is the six weeks. Let's get going. You know what I'm saying? Because we definitely want this thing to be supported, and let's get the long tail going. Yeah, I agree. The the, the six weeks average for an update is is pretty good that's almost an update a month and yeah, uh, i think that's a pretty big commitment because there was a story going around we'll talk about it later of a um i guess we'll talk about it now let yeah, me uh, scroll down and find mm-hmm. this here on the document uh the skyrim together developer has abandoned the skyrim uh starfield together project because they think the game is bad oh wow. um and so x flea has a write-in we'll get into it in a little bit here uh, but yeah, I think the reality is Bethesda has to commit and fix some of these problems themselves because they need to make a game that the base believes in and that the base wants to support. And once they get that, then the modders will come in strides in, in, in spades, I mean, and, and they will fill this thing full of content, right? It'll be the Forge effect. But like, that's the thing with Forge is like Halo Infinite was always a great game, but it needed the tools to make it an even better game. And now we see the result of that. So Starfield's in a weirdly similar position to Halo Infinite, I feel, um, where, yeah, you have like prolific modders saying like, fuck it, dude, this thing sucks. And so mm. I think that's why Bethesda's communicating this. I also think because of what happened with um, with the uh, the developers, I put in quotes, the customer support team responding to Steam reviews. Right. I think this is them kind of like, like a let's get involved a little bit more yeah. and like take the conversation toward the game and what we're going to do about it, which they should have been doing in the first place, in my opinion. Defining Duke is brought to you by Indeed. If you're hiring for your business on your own, you're basically playing Baldur's Gate 3 where you know you have that 12 level cap and every level you could multi-class, but that's not best for your build. Imagine you multi-class every single level. Not the best way to build your character out, right? So you need to breathe, take it easy, and keep it simple. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Here's why. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. So instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all by streamlining hiring with powerful tools that help you find matched candidates. And with Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job according to Indeed data on the US. That's why I like using Indeed because personally as someone hunting down you know, other game devs and whatnot, this just trims down the time spent and gets me who I want on my team. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash Duke. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at indeed.com slash Duke. Just go to indeed.com slash Duke and support the show by saying you heard about it here on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Duke. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Um. But yeah, with that news in in uh, our heads here about what's happening with Starfield together, X Flea writes in, "Hey Duke, Circada reports are in, and Starfield after three months is still in the top ten most sold games of the year after those three months, despite being on Game Pass. In terms of player engagement on Xbox, it's still rivaling against live service games previously in the number four spot in October, and now at the end of November, sitting at the number six spot again from Circada." Despite having 85 on Open Critic, did well, did well sales wise and player engagement rivaling live service games after three months from release. My question to you guys is this: Why are people putting so much stock to this Starfield Together modder's opinion? Is it even a concern with what this individual has to say? In my perspective, it seems to me that whatever the popular opinion about Starfield is on Twitter, the numbers say otherwise outside of that bubble. Um, and so yeah, we we have much to talk about with Starfield, but I'm just curious as to your thoughts on this cog where. Um, Many a mod has been abandoned before from BGS uh, for a number of reasons. And there have been ones that have blown up in their face, like uh, Fallout Frontier was one for New Vegas mod that was a huge overhaul and expansion and development for eight years. And uh, that was that ended in complete catastrophe. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Complete disaster of a mod. Like the mod itself like was impressive technically and some of the content there was great. But like, yeah, the, the, the people working on it, it was like really problematic. And so... Um, there have been mods that have gone up in flames before and made headlines, but this one seems to have um, kind of coupled itself unintentionally. So mod, I add, I think the modder, uh, I went to the Reddit thread where they had posted this and they yeah. were like explaining themselves like, if you guys like the game, like that's cool. Like I, we don't, I don't yeah. want to make you feel any other way about it. Like they were really good about it. I feel, mm-hmm. uh, but this is kind of where the conversation on Starfield has gone, where mm-hmm. um, 
you see something like this and it, it does become the primary headline. Mm -hmm. Whereas something like what's happening with Circana and their reporting here is not a massive headline. I know people are going to take this one way and one way only, which is like, here come the They're Dukes. They're defending, here come the Dukes yeah. defending Starfield. Yes. They always and got Normally we don't talk about, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've stopped our ways and nice. agonizing the audience, but we, I've, I know well and clear how it's going to be received. Um, and I'm just curious for you, Cog, um, what you make of this conversation, not just Starfield's discourse, but what you make of this being such a massive headline that's kind of used to piggyback the opinions that have been perpetu perpetrated online so often. Um, so yeah, take it away. Yeah, no, th th this is fair. I think that, look, the dichotomy that is Starfield is this, that it is a game with that was did not review did not have critical review success right from a review standpoint it was 85 don't get me wrong it's solid that that's good but mm -hmm. it wasn't like the 90 plus that everyone thought it was going to be and i think that part is fair of the argument if you want to say yo this does not compare to skyrim yo yo you know this is okay or hey yo i didn't like it right Fair. That's that's you. You do you, bro. Mm -hmm. No one's saying that you're incorrect for that. No one's saying like the defense of Starfield has nothing to do with you didn't like it or someone reviewed it bad, and thus that's the that's the narrative. What the issue is is kind of what Exley is saying, what, which is what I'm saying is that that's fine. There's that subset, but there's also this overwhelming su subset of the fact that it's a commercial success and we keep acting as if it's not. And that's the part I will push back on because to me, here's the thing. When people pigeonhole and cherry pick, you know, just steam and just this, or all I'm saying is look at the entire picture of where this revenue is coming. And he referenced Circana, which is, which is what I thought we do <laughs> when we look at how a game is doing, whether it be month to month active users or when it looks to year to date sales, right? When you look at like the top, what was the top games of the year, right? Mm -hmm. That sold, bro, it's, it's undeniable. So to me, that's where I kind of a little bit push back is because I say, okay, you may not like it. You may think it's nothing compared to Skyrim and that's fair. But to sit there and say that it is a flop, it is a disaster, it is, you know, what are they doing? You know, how can you stop? We're not doing that because that's not true. And to me, that I have to say it, that denotes some other agenda that other people have in reference to the game. And I will stand on a comment that you said, and since we go in there, mm -hmm. is, you know, SEO farming. Because I do feel if you put Starfield in a discussion with anything these days, even unrelated to certain things, it, it becomes a trend. We, we can't deny that that doesn't exist, right? I, I've seen the articles, which is like, you know, we're treating a single player game that doesn't have microtransactions, that doesn't have multiplayer, that doesn't have a, a live service element, and worrying about player drop off three months, four months later. I will push back against that. That to me is not a fair comparison to something of its ilk that's what yeah. now if you want the last one i'll say if you want to say skyrim bro skyrim the numbers is bigger than starfield skyrim had fair and my answer to that skyrim is thriller skyrim's the goat skyrim is, you know what I'm saying like that's how it is but anyway that, that's all i wanted to say on that i know they know oh, the dukes are back at it again but cogs back at it again fine well I'll say this in your defense and our defense in the sense mm -hmm. of the conversation. People need to recognize something, which is like one of the main complaints I think we'll get sometimes um, mm -hmm. is, is, you know, like, why are you guys talking about Starfield again? And it's like, it's the biggest game that's come out for them in years. Uh, and, and it's not just us saying it or us liking it, which I think often the conversation kind of turns into. It's, it's like, no, the numbers suggest like our audience is invested. You may not be, but much of our audience is. And, and, it is an ongoing thing. This is I, I, I partially hate and I love it, but like it's it is an ongoing game. All Bethesda Game Studios games are ongoing games. And I think this might be the first one a lot of people are in for the coverage for uh, yeah. where this is the, this has been the case for me with Fallout 76, Fallout 4, Skyrim. Like it is an ongoing thing. It is an evolving, ongoing conversation. So it's going to continue to be in the in the news cycle. I think you'll get a reprieve from it while we're away because I'm trying to think of our holiday episodes. We don't No, we do talk about Starfield. But like, that's <laughs> yeah, we it's, yeah, sorry, we do talk about something <laughs> like two, two distinct episodes, um, you know, but it's it's a massive game. It's as if Sacred Symbols talking about 
uh, the last of us part two again, like it's, it's, it's a very relevant, powerful, potent product in our ecosystem. And when our audience is writing in about it a lot, like that directs, like we want to talk about what our audience wants to talk about at the same time as threading the needle through the news. Fair. So yeah, that's why it's important to us. And I don't think that requires much explanation, but I, I figure mm-hmm. I'd offer it anyway, because I, I happen to, to, to sit a little bit in the middle where like, I, I, I agree mostly with X fleas, uh, statement here. Um, you know, I, I don't think all coverage of Starfield is this disingenuous. I think like a lot of people are disappointed with it. We'll talk about um we may as well just wrap this all together, right? Hold on. We have do the, do the whole we have right Starfield Schwagish Bog. Let's get it out. Let's yeah, get all the not, Starfield right? out. Let's get it out of the way. So if people want to skip it, they can. Like right? exactly. So, exactly. Um we had this right in here. It was in our warm-up questions. Our Ross R. Lowe writes, Hey Duke Boys, want to get y'all's opinion on the new Nakey Jakey video about Starfield and Bethesda's game design being outdated. He went pretty in-depth, and as someone who is disappointed with the game, can't help but agree with his points. Do you think Bethesda will keep this design for Elder Scrolls Six, or is it time for a change? Thanks for the great content in 2023, and I can't wait to see what's in store for 2024. Have a you-can't-fast-travel-and-enemies-are-nearby kind of day. Uh, thank you for writing in, Ross. Um, so, yeah, this is something that I, I want to talk about, too, because like not all coverage has been disingenuous of course uh, at all. And I think Nakey Jakey's video is a perfect example of that. I thought it was a really good video. I watched the whole thing um, while I was working on some content mm-hmm. of my own. And mm-hmm. um, I've said for a while uh, that and one thing I appreciate about his his argument that I funny enough, I've been working on this this video called How to Fix Bethesda that I'm probably going to put out while I'm on holiday break. And mm-hmm. one of my arguments and he doesn't really say this necessarily, but one of my arguments is like, don't change the engine. Um, Ooh. which I know a lot of people are like, I think it's just the easy go-to argument, yeah. like change the engine. Um, that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed like that. They've used the same fucking engines for like 20 years and they just upgraded it for their next generation. Like that shit's staying. Mm. So keep the engine because to me, Starfield's biggest problems, as Nikki Jakey said, is design. Like it is not the technical state of the game. It never was. Fortunately, like the bug that's the thing has not been brought up, at least in our circle really at all it's really about the design of the game and i thought this video was fantastic in the sense that it really uh, captured some of the elements of starfield that have have really upset people and have have left them disappointed um you know so i i think not all coverage is disingenuous but i think i'm not stupid i'm a content creator and i know these outlets have to think the same way as us there are certain stories that your heart makes a choice on that you know if you frame it a certain way this isn't just Starfield. This is anything. If you frame it a certain way, like you can draw some serious attention. And I think this is typically like, there is no real mainstream coverage in the modding community, especially when the modding community is just starting out. Might I add, um, usually like when a prolific mod, like the fall at the frontier comes around, like that's when the mainstream gets involved or sky Bolivian. That's when the mainstream really gets involved when it's a, tangible thing this type of shit never happens Mm. as far as i know and so that's where i look at and i kind of go like okay there's that sort of like they're doing their job they're letting you know but i do think it perpetrates the consistent narrative that surrounded the game for the last two months or so Mm -hmm. since the launch has come and gone it's not to say again that i'm taking away from anyone's thoughts it's more so just to say that there's a trend right now and it reminds me and i say this because look I was there in the thick of cyberpunk. This brings me right back to cyberpunk. <laughs> I love cyberpunk at launch. Everyone fucking hated it. And anytime I talked about it, no one wants to hear it. Now it's a totally different story. Dude, yeah. I can I can walk in the streets. Oh, I love cyberpunk. Everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, you do. And me too. So like, I just, like I've been in this situation before. Like I've seen how it goes. And like when it rained, it poured. Like every single cyberpunk story was super negative. No one wanted to hear anything good about CD Projekt Red during that stretch at all. Rightfully so. And I think Starfield, it's like definitely they're going through the media throws right now. Like they're being taught a lesson actively. Uh, and so I just it reminds me a lot of that. And to many people who have not liked BGS games for a while, this is an earned slap on the wrist that hopefully they'll adjust to. So to answer uh, Ross Arlo's question about Elder Scrolls six, like do, do, do they change the design? Um, I think because of it being an Elder Scrolls game, at least on the outside looking in it, sort of by nature of the series and being a fantasy game demands a different design from Starfield. I think they're going to go to with the Starfield tech, more of a Daggerfall approach again and make like a completely open Tamriel. That's been my prediction for a mm. while, like a totally open Tamriel oh, from wow. one end of the continent to the next. Wow. And uh, let you see all the regions with procedural content in between and some major cities and whatnot. I think 
that's going to be the goal here for Bethesda. Uh, it just seems like it would be a waste of the tech creative for Starfield to not utilize that to make what they hoped Daggerfall would be when it first came around. Mm. And maybe it resonates more because there's a, a more clear touchstone there where Starfield is a new IP using Daggerfall as a touchstone um, may not connect with as many people. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I say it. Right, Cog, any any thoughts on this or shall, shall we move on with the rest of our show? <laughs> I know the last point I'll say. Um, I think that yeah, I think Elder Scrolls not going to suffer from it. I think the fundamental issue where people that don't ha- that have an issue with Starfield comes down to what you said in, in regards to the exploration. Because inherently, when you go from an open world or a city on a on a planet. And then now you're going to all these other galaxies and then, you know, all these other procedural generation. There is that disconnect where Skyrim, it's like, okay, I'm in, you know, the city of whatever, right? Cyrodiil, right? And I can look over the mountain and see, okay, I can get there and something. And in between there, there's all these events and procedural things that can happen. That to me is the disconnect from the traditional, but that's the, and I think that is fair. So I'm not worried about Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I'm not worried about Elder Scrolls in the least because that is the formula. That's what we fell in love with. Starfield is this new thing they try to experiment with by taking you off of this hub and now going a smaller hub, not an open world, but going into the open world with all these other little smaller hubs and people are like, eh, I don't know if I like that mm-hmm. part, right? And I think that's fair, you know, from a de- yeah. to your point, a design standpoint. And I think that's a choice. But Elder Scrolls I'm not worried about at all because, I mean, that's the essence. To me, it's been... You know, oblivion, morrowing, all, all yeah, that from clear yeah. favoritism. Like exactly. that's that's the thing. Like as a Fallout fan, mm-hmm. I do like a lot of what Bethesda's done with Fallout, especially Fallout Three. Of course, people know, but like, I I, I know which one they prefer. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know which one's the cash cow, and I know yes. which one they prefer. And, 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 the and I think they'll give Elder Scrolls a particular love and respect that they always mm-hmm. have given it. And of so course, that'll be that, course. right? Because they. You know, they they for example, I look at what happened with Elder Scrolls Online versus <laughs> seventy six, bro. Just night and day, just night and day. Like they're, they, they, would, they would never have fucking done that to Elder Scrolls. Never in a million years. Yeah. Ship that thing out to die the way they. But they're like, it's Fallout. We kind of like inherited the thing. Like, let's just see how it goes, right? Like, so I mean, it's not that they don't care. It's just that you know there is there's a hierarchy. It's a there's favorite a favorite child, favorite in, the child in the house. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's go. That's what's going on with Starfield, though. New updates on the way. We'll see what those new forms of traveling are probably when we return um, in the top of the new year. Cool. Gene Park had an interview with Sega, Sega of America CEO Shuji Utsumi at Washington Post. Great read. Please check it out. Got the bullet points here. So upon returning to Sega four years ago, Sega of, uh, of America CEO Shuji Utsumi said that he discovered a, quote, treasure trove of IP to revisit, end quote. Uh, he mentions that the original creators are involved again in all of these reboots. He credits Sonic, Yakuza, and Persona for keeping the company afloat as they got to this phase. So yeah, shout out to our, our favorites here that we talk a lot about here on the show. He said they're listening to the Virtua Fighter community and evaluating how the IP could be more dramatic like other fighting games in the market. And then following this story up, Cog, you sent this one to me today. Sega filed the following four trademarks on December 6th in Japan, which were made public today. For Altered Beast, Eternal Champions, Jet Set Radio, and Kid Chameleon. So lots and lots of IP in that little treasure trove, right? And uh, imagine that these are some that may be on the way back alongside Virtua Fighter. And so, Cog, this new era of Sega is mighty, mighty exciting. The only worry I have that I I came down from Earth with when I was thinking about it after the Game Awards Mm. is i think a sonic like if you look at every ip sega owns like this is the one that they are identified by like sega Mm. equals sonic yes and i look at sonic frontiers as a game that i love in this weird way like i always call it the best seven out of ten game you can play Mm. it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but there's a lot of heart in it yeah but it could definitely be better in a lot of ways too so i look at that game and i think if they're kind of skimping out on assets being poured into that then what is the budget for these other reboots? How much Mm -hmm. are you giving a Jet Set? How much are you giving a Shinobi? Mm Because I will say visually, there were like levels to it. Like Jet Set looked a little unclean where Shinobi looked, dude, if I were you, I'd be out of my mind. Like that looked really good, right? Mm -hmm. Really out of everything, that looked the most clean. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So it looks like there's different levels. Golden Axe, 
I wonder how that's going to translate. Yeah, I got to see how that translates. Crazy taxi. I could see like with the modern tech, like, whoa, mm-hmm. frame rate. You know, that's a problem mm-hmm. here because we're going so fast. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering if there's been any developed thoughts after with this story here, as well as uh, what we saw at the Game Awards last week. I think, first of all, I want to salute Lord Utsumi, Lord Shuji, because he has been screaming what me and Saul have been screaming for years. Like, stop acting like y'all not the creators and sitting on these classic IPs that have tremendous history. It's like you don't even know your own worth. It's like you forget. It's like, you know how you fall on hard times yeah. and then it's like, you forget, yo, back in the day, I was, I, this, this was, I was the guy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what it is, is you fall on hard times, you go through a period of other things not working, right? And then it's like, all right, what, 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 what we got? What, what's, what, what's, what's cooking? All right, the hedgehog is still, he moving out here. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. They like this. They like the mafia style. Yakuza. Okay, they like that. Persona, this is where, okay. They, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, they, they got into this pocket of, these are the things that are actually making revenue. These are the things that people like. Let's refocus to keep ourselves in their defense to keep them afloat. Because they were looking spooky. They had to get out the console business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shout out to, you know, Peter Moore broke that story down. Very sad story. You know, how he had to break that down to, you know, the American division when they were shutting down and stuff. It was crazy. And he's, he, he talked about focus groups and how, like, they brought um, the attention. Like, how do you view Sega? And like at the time, it was like, you know, EA is like the arrogant quarterback, you know, good looking, gets on a girl, but he's kind of, you know, it's kind of a, a jerk, right? And then they were like, you know, I forgot what Nintendo was, whatever, but then they, they got to Sega and they were like, yeah, he's like your, your grandfather. And he's all <laughs> senile. He thinks he's cool, but he's not. And he's going to look. And I'm like, damn. So he told this story to Sega of Japan. He literally almost got into a fight. <laughs> like a fist fight? Well, be, not a fist fight, but like oh. th- you're lying. No one. We're the great Sega. No one feels that about uh, feels that way about us. We're we're how we we the fight. We, they were so out of touch in Japan of what people really felt about them at that time. And wow. Peter said, "Yo, we could fix this, but we gotta admit this is how we're viewed." Right. So, yeah, it was my man, it was Naka and my man, um, oh, my, Yu Suzuki, the, all the legends from Japan. They wasn't really feeling Peter when he broke the reel to them. So, yeah, great story. Highly advised. We got IOP up on there. Those two interviews with Peter. Please check them out. I got to, that's the only thing I'm going to pump, promote no, from IOP is away, those away. two, because I'm very proud. It was definitely, I learned so much from his journey and, and from Sega EA and, and so off and, and Xbox. But anyway, back to this. Um, the fact that they realized that and they stayed alive with Silent Yakuza Persona, and now they're in a position to rebound. So now they remake it. And the key is they're bringing some of the original creators that help each franchise. We'll see how it go, work, works out. But I think this is dope, man. And like we learned, it's not just, it, it said, and more, right? So now yeah. we're seeing, what is it? Um, Altered Beast, these trademarks, right? That were filed. Altered Beast, the Turtle Champions, Jets, you know, Chameleon, all that stuff. So I think they're sitting on it. And I love the fact that whoever's in charge, this, this gentleman's in charge, assuming, I think he gets it. I really do. I really think he gets it. So I'm I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident that they, and Virtufied, last thing I'll say, Virtufied is huge. Because as much as I'm a Tekken OG, mm-hmm. Virtufied is, is really the OG. And Virtufied is was actually, if you want to be real with it. Now Tekken, where is that now? Oh my God. But when they first came out, Virtual Fighter was all and the AM2 team. Shout out to the AM2. They were the standards on graphical fidelity and 3D fighting. It wasn't even close. The first three, vir- like four or five virtual fighters compared to the first three Tekkens, mm-hmm. it's not even close. Like, th- it's levels to this. But what happened is the, the traditional fighting style, I feel Tekken got martial arts down a little bit better. Animations, I felt they got better. And the last thing is Tekken is more flashy, more fun. It's more like... Virtual Fighter got a little bit boring and pat, 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 yeah. you know, kind of thing. So if you, in the comments, he mentioned that, um, he said something like, yeah, because people asked about Virtual Fighter. They said they want to do, you know, some things with it to try to revive it and make it a little bit more flashy and stuff like now. And the last thing I'll say it's um, about, about what I like everything they're saying is that they're going back to the rebellious spirit of Sega. Anybody who's a true Sega fan knows 
you know, you were always the underdog. It was, the, you know, big, bad Nintendo. And Nintendo was great. They had all these dominant IPs. But Sega was that rebel that came into the scene and was like, yo, we here now. Respect. Yep. And I like him saying that they're bringing, that's what Gene got out of him, this old, like, kind of bohemian yep. spirit. Yo, we here. Like, that's the, you know, Sega, that, that, that is what we, we, we <laughs> missed from them. The co- they was cocky. They, 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 they was cocky, man. They, but they, 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 they had the, the games to back it up. So I'm excited, man. You know, man, here's the funny part Let's go. of all of this. Let's go. There is so much excitement around all these Sega reboots, and they haven't even brought out the trap card. Let's go. What's the trap card? Sonic Adventure remake. Sonic Adventure reboot, whatever it may be. I'm telling y'all, Sonic Frontiers was the most successful Sonic game. They are Ooh. now, like, they know, like, Sonic 3's on the way. Shadow's about to be back in the picture. They... No, they're sitting on like a gold mine with Sonic. Obviously, continuing this mainline series, I think evolving that Breath of the Wild formula is going to be very exciting to see how they handle it. Um, I thought some of the things they did in the Final Horizon update this year were really yes. cool, especially with the new playable characters. Like you can just tell they're moving in that direction of getting all the pieces for either a Sonic Adventure like game or probably a remake, remake or reboot in the case of what they've been doing with all these other series mm-hmm. of Sonic Adventure. Uh, and, and and once they pulled that alongside everything else, like, dude, they are going to be sitting so pretty persona six in development. Yeah. New York is a game about to come out. That's like hitting mainstream levels. Like they are about to hit an all time high, which makes sense why they were like, we're not interested in selling right now, although we're honored. <laughs> Let's see what happens when they got to reload the chamber. <laughs> yeah. Sitting on it. It definitely, that, that's definitely one in the tuck, whatever it get, you oh, know? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Next up, we have, according to Brad Hildebrand, senior PR manager at Microsoft and multiple Xbox game studios on his LinkedIn page, he is listed South of Midnight and Towerborn, Towerborn being the one that we already know, but South of Midnight is here also listed to be coming out in 2024. How do you feel about this, sir? Based off what we saw mm-hmm. during the summer showcase versus mm-hmm. how long the games have been in development for, do you think mm-hmm. South of Midnight could be closer than we expect? Did you get that I'll- vibe? I, I a really we covered that. Remember that Xbox Wire post? We got like yes. a really thorough breakdown, but they didn't show right. anything. I figured if it's about a year and change out, they would have shown more unless there's a direct on the way, in which case I guess I kind of get it. But did you get a vibe that this was sooner rather than later? I didn't get a vibe that it was sooner. I, I'll be yeah. honest. I didn't get the vibe. I, I got the vibe like, OK, you're going to get what the concept is. Right. And, and, and we're going for, you know, deep south and we're going for those those kind of um, horror roots. And I love um, one of the interviews from the team as far as um, black culture and black history and what they're trying to do with certain elements to it. But yeah, I, was, I I didn't hear this, so th- this is news to me. <laughs> you know, saying that hey, if you if they happen to be ready, sure, of course, you know, let let's go because obviously everybody's been waiting on compulsion. I think the I, the thing I got from the showcase was we just want to know what they are doing, right? It was like they've yeah. been quiet. What are they doing? So I I didn't translate that to yo, they're gonna be ready to drop kind of energy. I I didn't, but hey, maybe so. What, what do you think? When it comes to this one, I, I definitely agree with your sentiment that it felt like this is one that, you know, like, here's what we're doing. A lot of the announcements during the showcase are like, here's what we're doing. And I thought it was great because I think we needed to know we had Starfield coming this year. Like, we needed to know what's going to excite us next. And I think that's what made for some people Starfield, like, if they didn't like it, even bearable because they were like, OK, I still got this, this and that. Like, I still got a vow and a vow looks more like what I like from a Bethesda Game Studio South game, just as an example. So I think it was vital they showed all these off and gave a clear roadmap because now you have like the near term and the long term. Like we know Blade is a long term game. Right. Um, South of Midnight, I feel like it could go one of two ways. Um, you know, if they had gameplay ready and it's going to be coming out in 2024, why they didn't show it this summer is beyond me. But I think a developer direct could flip my opinion just very quickly. If they show that off, I'd be like, oh, of course, they were just holding it for then. That makes sense. Um, so that's how I rationalize it. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if this one ends up due out 2025 instead, though. I think yeah. right now this could have been like a, a just a little LinkedIn slip. It could just be that simple. But it could also be like they're talking about getting these big exclusives out uh, once per quarter. And 
when I think about that, this does mean that certain games that could benefit from having more time in the can might go later, uh, which mm-hmm. is something Phil Spencer said in one of the leaked emails, which yes. is something we've said on Defining Do for a long while. That like, mm-hmm. look, you know, if you guys have a ton of games, don't do what you did in 2021 and shoot them out four or five months in a row. Uh, spread them out, spread them out, and make them exciting for people and, and build up to them and make them feel like a big deal. Even if like South of Midnight isn't like the big sexy AAA game like we. Uh, maybe thought it could have been based off what we saw with uh, We Happy Few. Um, it looks like it's going to be a special game nonetheless. And so, you know, build up to that, create excitement yeah. around it. You can't do that if it's in between like Hellblade 2 and like your latest day one game pass drop. Yeah. So we'll see what they do. But yeah, South of Midnight may be due out in 2024 if a single LinkedIn page is anything to go by. We shall see. Hey, I'm pulling for compulsion. We'll see. My gut still says. 2025. But hey, if you want to have a direct in 2024, I want to just include it with Towerborn yeah. and include it with Hellblade and all <laughs> that. Hey, hey, if it's ready, we don't doubt. This one we're very excited about. Mena Kato, former PlayStation executive who had joined Xbox back in July, is telling Japanese publishers to release their game on Xbox because PlayStation is not enough to expand their business alone. Um, this is an article from Bloomberg, and she it really leans into her saying how um she gets it and that she has a tough task ahead of her and trying to convert a lot of people over. But what she's trying to sell them on is that Xbox is like necessary to bringing their games to the next level. And I would guarantee I'd put my fucking money on it that they're showing oh. all they're doing with Atlas right now and being like, mm. look, look, look at Yakuza. Yakuza was a PlayStation exclusive franchise. Look at it now. It is it is undeniable how much more popular it is. Not that PlayStation is doing anything to hold it down. They were doing the right thing. They had a very attractive game exclusively to their platform that made me go out and buy Kiwami 1 and 2. Like, they did the right thing. Mm -hmm. But for Sega, they've now done the right thing for themselves and taking a bet on Xbox, putting it on Game Pass, and that is a series that is way more popular than it's ever been. It's the point where Xbox is paying for day one Game Pass deals and stuff, and so I bet she is selling them that alone. Like, look at what is happening with Sega. Like, they are the test bed. Yeah. And everything that's happening there could be you. Look what we're doing with Square Enix. Look how big of a deal just Phil Spencer showing up on stage was. Um, so yeah, this is exciting in a, in a sense because um, I think it shows Xbox is serious about Japan with a hire like this who, you know, formerly working at PlayStation. Like when she was like one of the main faces there that like kept those relations strong as we had covered when her hiring occurred. Uh, for her to kind of be going out to bat for Xbox with those pre-established relationships um, could serve as one of the unsung heroes at Xbox that gets us back to uh, the 360 days. I was actually going through my collection uh, for a collection video I'm doing on Retro Rebound, and I pulled out like six different really unique exclusive JRPGs on the 360 that uh, have just done, like they were, they were just incredible. Like yeah. Infinite Undiscovery, mm. uh, Lost Odyssey, Lost of course, Odyssey. Blue Dragon, of course, mm-hmm. you know, some of the ones that people already know. Uh, 99 nights. There was just mm. so many random ones there because like Xbox was the platform during that generation for most of it until PlayStation, even the, the battleground. But, um, you know, I look at that and I think now I was, it was causing me to reflect. I'm like, dude, we're 2024 20, almost. And like, we got one Japanese style game from hi-fi and hi-fi rush. Like that's really it. And that's not like your full on JRPG, right? Mm. Like a Japanese style action game. Um, and so a really Japanese developed action game more than anything. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I, I hope this leads to that era. Like I always said, like I think start mm-hmm. with what they did with like Yakuza, like mm-hmm. Game Pass, make sure everyone's going to be here. Like what's happened with Visions of Mana, make mm-hmm. sure everyone's going to be here. Then climb the ladder to the next step, right? Like that's yeah. how I'm looking at it. So I, I find this to be great news, Cog. What about you? Super inspiring news I, I love this um yeah i didn't know too much about her um just trying to research and and seeing how much of an influence she was in, in the playstation ecosystem and it seemed that microsoft approached her multiple times in the past mm-hmm. before she actually committed you know to joining the team and she has those relationships and understands how J- japanese publishers work and i think her argument is sound and this is something we've kind of been preaching on ilp which is you know we get that PlayStation and the the exclusive bag, right, mm. that they would give, you know, to court Japanese companies is enticing, right? But what they've been able to do is break through, whether it be through her, and she also mentioned she liked the idea, the fact that there were a lot of women at Xbox, and that Sarah Bond was also a huge part of one of the reasons why she joined. And if you notice, the thing that I always said actually came to fruition, which is 
the boots on the ground, which is going there, right? Consistently each single time. That's the first thing, physically b- building the relationships. That's one. But two, to the point with Sony is that they're conveying to Japanese publishers that, look, it's more advantageous for you to have it over here and on Game Pass in conjunction. We're not limiting you to stop you from putting it over there, but to expand because what people want is a bigger piece of the pie. Now you're seeing the success. You see RGG go, oh, my God, you know, Yakuza, we can't believe people really like it like that in the West. We can't. They, they didn't they didn't see that. And also the sensibilities in the way. You know, American companies talk to Japanese publishers. They didn't like the way it was. They wasn't. The res- it's all about respect. Shout out to my man, expat. Shout out to Genki. There's a couple of people I speak to that, you know, we, that I live there that, you know, that uh, follow the Xbox platform that actually live in Japan. Respect is huge. And they're making those strides. And um, the oh, the big thing, the thing that the, this the Trojan horse. And I know everybody's wrapped up in console sales and all of this. But the Trojan horse that you got, I got from our interview is PC Game Pass and PC Cloud, getting it into those markets, that's because they said they use cloud and they use PC. And that's a way they're penetrating into these other markets in in addition to Japan. She mentioned a big thing with that. So that's a huge deal. And that's where having Xbox strategy of the platform, console, Mm -hmm. cloud, PC, is going to be to their advantage to, that's the Trojan horse to get through in those regions. And then, of course, Game Pass. So Great stuff. I think I, I loved everything she had to say. I think she she's gonna be a, she's a key hire for them. She like she's already making sure. And the last thing, look at the proof of the pudding. We see Square now. You saw what was the new joint that um the drop? Visions of Honor, yeah. right? Not missing. Uh, Atlas, metaphor, new IP, not missing, right? Yakuza. Xbox branding too, by the way. Xbox All branding. Ending with Xbox, yeah. Capcom, the dope joint, Path to the Goddess or whatever it's called with the yeah. joint. Remember the, the joint with the, she got the flowing? Yeah, not missing. Right. The signs oh, are missing. there. Yeah, they, they, that's what I see. I, it, everyone's really like, oh, they, they, it's, it's failing over here. No, bro, they're making the strides. They're making the debts. And again, will it be, oh my God, it's the most dominant thing? I'm not saying that. But they're taking a substantial uh, piece of the pie as far as now being included in all the stuff. Yeah. And that is just- Which is step one, right? It's, a lot of people, I remember in our early parts of our show, like, yo, they got to get the exclusives. I'm like, no, they just got to be there because no one's going to care if they're like, you can't, if you know you can't get like your big budget, like a uh, uh, JRPG coming to the all platforms guaranteed on Xbox, like then that is like an immediate, like you're, you're playing just way too risky now. It's like, Oh, I might get the cool exclusive every now and then, but I know I won't get final fantasy or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I just, I, I, I'm glad to see Xbox is, is starting to turn around a little bit in Japan. This is the, the right step forward we've been looking for. Yeah. Good stuff. Baldur's Gate 3 is out now on Xbox, but there is a save bug that's causing players to lose their save files. At least as of the moment of recording this episode, Microsoft and Larian are collaborating on a fix for the issue. Double check later on to see if it's actually done, but right now it has yet to be permanently resolved. Joshua Brown writes in, hey Dukes, just writing in to vent and draw attention to the joke of a port that Larian put out for Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox. After racking up 10 hours of play over the past few days, I only had five of those hours to show for uh, as every other night I would lose hours of progress as my save would go missing. Then to top it off, the patch Larian just put out has completely erased my save file. If you check the Baldur's Gate 3 subreddit, it turns out I'm not alone and it's widespread. This is such a huge bummer and I'm now looking forward to getting a refund and perhaps I'll give it another try in a few months after more patches and a cheaper price. Anyway, hope you're having the opposite of a I've waited months to play a hyped up game only to have it not respect my time kind of day. So unfortunately, Joshua Damn. is out of the Baldur's Gate 3, ra- Baldur's Gate 3 race. And um, mm. with that cog, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's just can't, it can't get the W here, can we? <laughs> that sucks, man. I, that, that's awful. It, it just yeah. can't happen. I mean, from what I understand, it's tied directly to um, quick resume. So what I would advise people highly do not treat this game uh, like a traditional quick resume. Because sometimes, I'll be honest, I'm guilty of this, Manny. I'll play, I'll do a save, and I'll just shut off my PC, I mean, my, my Xbox, or, or just you know switch to another game. And you're going to have to do the traditional quick close the app. That's what people are advising, because I think if it's in that hung state, it almost reminds me of quick resume sometimes with um, certain live service games. I remember early they would have to patch those out. I think Yakuza was one of those early that they had to fix. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a quick resume thing. I've seen this kind of thing before. 
And um, yeah, because they said Microsoft sucks, but... had to get involved to help this. So right, yeah, because it, it's 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 distinct to the fact that Quick Resume is part of the console. And, and I don't know if maybe the way that the communication is talking that it's it's online. I'll get to it when I when I get to what I'm playing as, as far. I have a, a fun story to, to to help explain certain things further. But yeah, they got to get on it. And uh, the, the, that that's Xbox's responsibility for sure. I feel, I mean, in conjunction with Larry working on that. that yeah, they got to fix it. That's bad. You can't lose save data. That's a bad look. Yeah, especially with uh, missing out on the announcement. So people are kind of going in like, well, I've heard good things about this. And then yeah. this happens. It's, it's frustrating. So hopefully they figure this one out. Absolutely. But the second they do figure it out, if you're holding out, ladies and gentlemen, once it's all good, go buy Baldur's Gate 3. Exactly. It's worth your money. Do that, do that. 343's Brian Gerard spoke on Kind of Funny's X-Cast about the ongoing plans for Halo Infinite and shutting down the possibility of any single player content on the way. Quote, I'll be honest, we have nothing to announce today regarding any campaign content for Infinite. I'll even go a step further and tell you that right now there's nothing in active development on that front. We made the decision just over a year ago to really double down on improving the multiplayer product, end quote. So in a sense, Cog, this kind of tells us that there may have actually been a little something ongoing at one point. I think this is actually the right choice. I am all for more single player content in Halo. I think it's really important they keep that part of the franchise alive. But when you look at where Infinite is now, you can feel the momentum. The fact that I imagine it's just a holiday event, but they already post like a new trailer saying or teaser saying like, hey, December 28th, like, you know, and they, you see like the snowflake and stuff. I'm like, yo, are they finally going to put snow maps in? Like this is happening across the course of like a month and change. Like they've already added the Halo 3 maps. They've added their own maps in for season five. Now they might be adding more stuff. Uh, they just did Firefight, King of the Hill. Like they are on a roll. So I actually think this was the right call to re- to repair and recover this product. And Jez had a really interesting thought that I, I was dying to get your thoughts on. Yeah, what you say? He said on Twitter, what if Halo Infinite was the infinite multiplayer product and they just kept making single player games around that? And I was like, you know what? I saw a lot of people like, no. Nah. I was like, I actually really like that because I feel like Halo Infinite is arguably the best feeling Halo game they got the ball rolling. It's got the name. It's kind of weird if Infinite shuts down. You're just setting yourself up there. And if you could just focus on campaigns, which one of the challenges we learned with Infinite was doing what's expected of a Halo game, your Forge, your split screen co-op, your multiplayer, your campaign, like it's a big undertaking. Um, so if you have this already maintained product here with Master Chief Collection and Infinite, do you think Cog like... Do you think that could be a route for them? I'm wondering your thoughts, not only what uh, Brian Gerard said here, but also Jess's thoughts, because I thought they were kind of interesting. No, they are. It, it, it almost uh, makes me think of like a suite, right? Where you have the, the, this is the multiplayer and infinite is the multiplayer suite. That's where you go to access it in this hub. And then you have a separate component that is um, single player. Look, this was tough, man, because I knew so much behind the scenes prior. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I didn't know that they at the time that they, they had planned to to, um, you know, it felt like single player content. And um, after changes, obviously, a lot of leadership changes and people le- left and stuff like that with Bonnie and then obviously um, what's our man Staten and then stuff like that. So from my understanding that it's off the table, you know, um, it's still going to be Halo uh, complete this, you know, continue cons- consistent updates with the multiplayer in conjunction with probably that uh, mode that we all expect, which is some form of, I don't know, battle royal or whatever we call from certain affinity, right? Mm. That we assume is going to utilize Unreal Engine, but no more Unreal Engine single player content stuff is from from my understanding. So I think they're being transparent about it, you know, now to get, to get people's hopes up that that's going to happen. However, to Jez's point, there is a possibility possibility that maybe the window is shorter for if if they're going to go the route that Infinite stays in perpetuity, almost like a Forza Motorsport will stay in perpetuity as the racing game for this gen, mm. and maybe you give us one more story content thing three or four years later as a separate suite that's not part of Halo Infinite, and then you just you know you can further. The Halo Infinite when you want to play the multiplayer. I would like that, but we'll see. It depends on their direction. You know, the vibe I get, they may just be going back to the drawing board on, on for the next one. Right. And 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 it's sad because I want more Chief. I want the continuation of the Atriox storyline and everything that for people who ended it Halo Infinite, you know, other things are in play here. So yeah, yeah that that that's where I'm at. So where, where are you at? Do you think do you you with your jazz or do you think they do something this gen single player, or do you think it's kind of like you know what? Let's 
let's take our ball, let's let's re up, you know, kind of thing. Where where you at? Mm-hmm. I think it's wise to get people to miss Halo first. Just keep supporting this product, keep it alive, keep it afloat. Because right now, truthfully, yes. Xbox is setting themselves up quietly for, and I'm getting ahead of myself and I'll admit it, Ooh. a all-timer launch window. We don't Ooh. know if these would be launch titles, but you look oh, at where yeah. Blade is starting. Yeah, yeah. We're here in oh. 2028 to start a new gen. Five-year mm-hmm. development cycle, pretty common. Elder Scrolls 6 up next Scroll after six. Starfield. That's crazy. Halo's not working on single-player content now. I would be shocked if they weren't going to start that for the new generation. They didn't get the launch Halo with this console, but maybe you get it oh. next time. Wait, you talk about the trifecta, the Halo, the Elder Scroll. Oh, you really? Woo! I'm okay. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. I really that's, think that's what we're seeing are some of the seeds being planted for the next generation. Um, Blade, especially, I think is something that has to be next gen. Um, I just, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like why force it? We saw what happened when you forced it and how it turned out. And, and now Halo's publicly viewed the lowest it's been ever so you need to restore that confidence you start off by fixing what is broken right and you guys do an amazing like i said they they've hit their stride they do an amazing job when they're just supporting an existing product starting from the ground up they have some struggles and so now they've got the benefit potentially of an entire rest of the generation to figure that out especially if the rumor as reported is unreal engine like they got to build new tool sets so it would be kind of cool to be like for the next generation of gamers, a new Halo built on an entirely new engine. And if you like the old thing, by the way, Infinite's still getting supported. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, I just, I really like Jess's idea. I was like, I think that is the healthiest way to go forward. I, I just feel like you got to stay, stay confident with Infinite. Like that's, I mean, it's being rewarded now, but like the game always felt great. I, I won't yeah. act like I was kissing its ass here when I was tearing it apart on a weekly basis, but like mm-hmm. it always felt great where it's worth sticking with at this point now that it's recovered, the player base is starting to come back. People are starting to pay attention. And I wonder if Infinite is being dedicated as the main multiplayer product because of this little news beat here, Cog. Mm-hmm. Halo Master Chief Collection updates may be done as developers around the team are receiving plaques that say they have finished the fight with the end date being marked as July, which is when the last update hit the game. Mind you, the start date is when the game released. It is also accompanied by the following letter, quote, your dedication, teamwork, and commitment to excellence have not gone unnoticed. Together, we have achieved a significant milestone, and it's all thanks to your hard work and determination, end quote. So if Master Chief Collection is kind of closing down and you're putting all your resources into Infinite, mm, you know, and like you're not working on this single player game, you're maybe building the tool set for the next thing. I just, I feel like they're re-gearing. I feel like they're retooling and, uh, I find that to be a little exciting because I, I I love Master Chief Collection, but it's gotten so much support for since 2014. Now it's like, yeah, we almost put a decade into it. Like I, I'm sure there's more. Someone will let me know some map from like a Halo Online that like I've never heard of that could be thrown in the game that Gearbox worked on or some shit. Like that's definitely possible. But I feel <laughs> like if we're, I'm okay with how MCC is, and I have been for a long while. Like since they did like I think Firefight or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that was like when I was like, okay, they're just going above and beyond now. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, I feel like they've got it all here. And I think it, it, if they're going to move on to, to really give Infinite everything they've got and have like the next like, big update be a blowout, like I think it's worth it. I do. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, people are going to go back to MCC is a beautiful legacy product to have if you're Microsoft. Like you just yeah. have that, all the Halo games just sitting there, maintained, now fine tuned to perfection, like just right there, fired up anytime you want. It's a, that's the type of thing that you can now stop supporting yeah. and move on to getting infinite to that level. Right. Absolutely. So I, I'm kind of cool with the move. Some people are very worried about this move though. Where do you stand on it? No, I'm cool with it. I mean, they, they've completed the mission, which was to get that. I remember at the launch of the Xbox one, how broken you want to talk about broken law. You want to talk about like, look, I know we get ref for some crystal stuff, you couldn't functionally turn Master Chief Collection on to get into a match. I remember stuttering, at, like I would play, open up Halo, and I couldn't get past the cinematics. It would be like two frames per second in a hard crash. Like this thing was an absolute disaster. Let's be clear. I, I never saw anything. I, I remember it was so bad, Matty. That was the f- the last chance I felt during the Xbox One era 
for people, people like, yo, well, they saw the, uh, the E3 presentation of it. Oh, my God. Mm. Remastered 1080, 60, all the clacks. People like, yo, I ain't going to front. I'll buy uh, Xbox One for yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, that was a huge announcement, bro. That was crazy bro. when we saw that. So many people, yo, Cog, I'm, I'm getting it right now. I've got an Xbox One right now. And it's like, bro, I'm sending this back. Are you kidding me? I can't even play it for <laughs> months. I remember this. So mm-hmm. to see that transformation, right, to not only a resurgence to at one point passing Halo Infinite, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this thing has did the ultimate comeback. That's why I want to give, you know, Pierre uh, Heinz and the team. Like this was, he was uh, saddled with the kind of, the re- rehabilitation of it, mm-hmm. right? And bro, they've done a phenomenal job. That it, it is, it is classic. So to your point, answering the question, um, yes, they finished the fight. I do find it interesting that now Halo Infinite is, I think, either teasing or showing potential classic maps that could come, you know, to to um to 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 Infinite from the old series. And yeah, I, I think put the resources there on on Infinite and and see what's going on. But yeah, absolutely, I have, I think. They've more than exceeded and and f- fulfilled their promise. I remember they were only like, "This is unacceptable. We're going to get it to a state where it needs to be." And they did that absolutely, and and more. Some they kept on and kept on over delivered on their promise because they knew how much that franchise means, and yeah. you couldn't have it in that state. Yeah, it's time to give Infinite the same treatment, right? So absolutely. Yeah. So let's go on with Halo. Yeah, yeah. E three is dead. This time for real. Quote. After more than two decades of serving as a central showcase for the video game industry, ESA has decided to end E3. ESA remains focused on advocating for ESA member companies and the industry workforce to fuel positive cultural and economic impact every day. Mubarak writes in, hey, Dukes, a few more days and it's finally time for a break. It's official E3 is dead after waning in relevancy pre-pandemic and barely clinging to life post-pandemic. How do you feel now that the axe is finally falling? Having, oh my God, I can't believe I haven't started my Christmas shopping type of day. Thank you, Mubarak, for writing in. Salute, salute. So yeah, it's official. I mean, we've kind of been just waiting for the hat to drop here, uh, but it's over. E3 is dead. And I know both you and I have a lot of memories with this. Um, so what are your thoughts now that we know? No more, man. We're never going back. Yeah, I know, I know. Crazy, right? Um, not surprised because we felt the last two, three years were kind of lame attempts to try to keep forcing it, right? To try yeah. to force, you know, the champion won't go out like that. He's mm-hmm. still trying to, you know, it's not over. Because we, we, yo, next <laughs> year, guys, next year, you know, kind of thing. But look, you know, Jeff, Jeff won the war. Jeff won the war, you know, and, um, you know, Summer Games Fest is here now. Um, but yeah, E3 is, well, there will never be anything. That will that will top that as far as I'm concerned as a gamer, you know, and I post some some kind of sentimental pictures up on Twitter that, you know, I had because I used to do it. it was tradition. I would go I believe the street was South Figueroa Street or whatever, right across from the um, main E3, the you know, the main uh, building. And I would take my picture, you know, what I'm saying because at, at that time, you know, it was a dream of mine, you know, E3 kid from the South Bronx. Yeah, I would see the videos. I would see the tapes of the presentations. And I'm like, man, I want to get there. I want to be there. You know, and it was only, you know, almost like industry facing. And it, it was a while before I could go and be, I had to become a content creator. And it, it still didn't get accepted. I had to be, you know, ILP wasn't big enough. He still gets it. He came with log that. We finally got in and tick and shot my tech uh, homies. But um, yeah, it, it's going to be special. There, there's the congregation of developers, the bombastic nature, I'm going to use bombastic again, <laughs> of um, <laughs> making up words, <laughs> making up words, you know, of, of just seeing, to me, the magic of E3 will always be going to a presentation, seeing the Phil Spencer, seeing the, you know, heads of Sony or heads of Nintendo come and announce some mind-blowing announcement from a game that you didn't expect and hearing the roar of the crowd, walking down the streets, bumping into all the luminaries in gaming, the E3 parties, the booths. The, like, it was just, it was a thing, right? You know, and um, it's crazy because you were there during, and I, I didn't know you at the test. So it's yeah. like, we crossed yeah. paths, right? How crazy is that? We've crossed paths. We didn't even know each other at that time and all the relationships. So it will be sorely missed. Um, Yeah, man, it, I, I, I feel bad for people who never experienced it in its hay mm-hmm. for how special it was. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, you know, it, 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 it's an end of an era. It's an era. So I shared my little tweet, regardless of how you feel about the ESA or whatever, it was something special. And um, I will never forget the memories of, of E3. And uh, I still have stuff on tape to watch and stuff like that. So what about yeah. you? 
a uh, little mixed, you okay. know, uh, not trying to let the emotions win the experience. E3 has been, you know, hanging on by a thread for years. We knew this day was coming. I thought maybe they'd have one more in them to tell you the truth. But, you know, after the game awards and how it represents our industry, you kind of go like, all right, this is the world we're living in. So many people were like championing, by the way, people who work in our industry, championing death of E3. That is true. You gotta go down and die. And I get it. They, they've, they've fucking sucked for the last couple of years. But now we're stuck with Jeff's vision of what that is, which is Timothy Chalamet presenting Game of the Year. And we're stuck with this vision of a very clicky industry. You know, I just, I feel like E3 was equal opportunity for everyone. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think that's the case for the Game Awards or Summer Game. Yeah, we're, we're not on the list, man. You know, you're trying to say the Duke's on the list. Yeah, that's the thing. I'll keep it real. There's lists. There's exclusivity access. You got to know someone to get in. I've had people try to pull strings for me in the past, and it's not like I really wanted to go, but like, yeah, you got to know someone to get in. Country it's that kind of level of event. And I don't know, man. I'm just like, look, that kind of makes me feel a little uneasy that like that's the industry we've turned into. We've lost something that granted was on the way out, not adjusting and adapting properly, but in its in its time was something that Maddie Cog. Oh. We got our starting roots from like, or we yeah. grew into that. And Facts. when we got there, there is something for the industry worker that is missing now. And it, 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 the ability to see a dev, shake their hand, communicate with them. Because nowadays, I mean, you could just tell by like, listen to any podcast, the amount of headline reading without context that, on, that goes on. Like it's so much irresponsible consumptions of content. And I feel like it's easy to judge people nowadays based on just like a thumbnail, for example. Yeah. And like when you meet that person, you're like, it's always the same story. Like, it wasn't that bad, actually. Yeah, right. And yeah. I think it's going to lead to a more calloused injury industry. I think it's going to lead to a little more cold, closed off industry mm. um, just by nature of what now currently represents us. And it doesn't yeah. represent us well. So, uh, you know, yeah, we're going to get the hype announcements and reveals. And Jeff did win the war, but I just, uh, until he actually advocates for games and actually moving indies forward, like as an indie dev, E3 would would be would have been great at the time yeah. because I can meet with publishers of all kinds there and just pitch the game away to oh, dozens of people, God, and yeah. it always starts with a conversation. That's just been stripped out now, um, and we've had to adjust anyway in a pan, you know, post pandemic world, but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, dude, like I, I, I just, I would normally be like, yeah, it's whatever. I have great memories of it, but now seeing what happened with the game awards and how important it is to have that kind of level Loved of representation, tweet, it hits yeah. me a little different where I'm like, this is a little worrisome. Like maybe we'll adjust next year. I don't think we will adjust big time. Um, but yeah, like now that we're, we've lost this, it's like the only person who gains in this is Jeff. <laughs> let's keep it real Jeff and his company um, you know that that's really it so I I don't know I wasn't like thrilled about it in the first place but like yeah. you know just seeing how things are going now I'm like yeah I don't know if we're trending in the right direction in some mm-hmm. ways like not that valid. E3 had to happen but I don't know if we're really collectively trending in the right direction no valid concerns and I, I, I really resonate what you said in reference to you know, from any development, the way video games should be respected and 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 cherished and 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 praised. Um, one thing about the E3 floor that people forget is, like you said, like you, you yourself making a game, any developer, you would be in proximity to any luminary publisher, and sometimes the deals that we know to this day got made just by those social interactions and in being an E3. And the last thing I, I say I will miss is some classic moments as far as not just on the floor and showcasing games, not just um, the showcase of on a stage, but also I remember when I was filing media and being able to go into the meeting rooms and have that kind of intimate setting with the developer, showcasing the game, there's terminals, you had other media luminaries, a few of them, but like I remember seeing like um, Metro behind the scenes, like one time, Gears 4 behind the scenes, like the, you know, the launch of a console, so many 
really powerful moment. Shout out to Kanye West for stealing my HoloLens appointment and they <laughs> faded me, but it was cool, Kanye. It's all right. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you really, I was not I was not on the tier to get bumped. They bumped me out. They was like, that's crazy. <laughs> shout out to shout out to the Duke Ryan McCaffrey. I remember getting a chance to see Division. This is what I knew about the power of the media pass. I waited on this line for Division All Line. Here came Ryan McCaffrey and they got the whole <laughs> Skip yeah. all of us and go, but it, you you learn certain things. You know what I'm saying? There you were learned, levels. You there were it levels. was levels. You had to earn your shades. I wasn't reading yet. You know what I'm saying? The, the 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 idea of the the plain badge, the blue badge, the industry badge. It was a funny thing, man. So again, memories, times that will be missed. And to your point, we got to see how this thing goes because yeah, a lot of people are upset, including developers right now, and. I, we know it's a, a presentation show, but it, it got to be more than just trailers, bro. It has to be celebrating and doing things the right way. So agreed. Let's see. We got a uh, Larry Herb here, who is going to Midwest Games as a communications advisor. Here is Larry's comments on the matter, because naturally people are like, "Oh, is this his next big gig after Xbox?" They said, "I'm getting some DMs and texts about my Midway Midwest." I think I said Midway earlier. I, my head's in a completely different era. Uh, my Midwest Games announcement. Um, I'm joining their board of advisors to help guide them. I have a few other advisor boards I'm working with as well. So don't be too surprised when you see me pop up on a few other boards. So he's lending his talent and input elsewhere. So there you have it. That's what's going yeah. on with Larry Herb. Salute to Major Nelson out there, you know, moving in these streets. And I, I, did, I didn't know about Midwest Games, to be honest. But it looks like they're doing that and also other underrepresented regions yeah. in gaming. I thought that's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. The day before, <laughs> I don't know if you've caught up on this one here, but Brian Wagers has a brief recap for us. Hey, Dukes, hope you both have a restful and happy holiday. This week, the day before developer Fantastic shut down four days after the game launched. The statement released pointed to a few funds being uh, made being diverted to partner debts. While maybe not sketchy, it really reads that way. So my question for you two is, is it time that the major console makers get together and put in new regulations related to published games? If you happen to buy this game, you have no idea how long the game will be accessible and you clearly aren't getting your money back. Thanks, Brian. Now, since then, what's developed is... For those who have been tracked the day before... I have not. What's going on? Oh, my God. So, leading into the launch of this game, it was pretty clear that, like, what they were showing wasn't what we were going to get. They have hoodwinked so many people, might add. They got a billboard at Times Square. They got IGN to do exclusive coverage. They got NVIDIA to do an exclusive gameplay reveal showing off the RTX 4K gameplay. What? So they got partners. They mm. got partners. They hoodwinked a lot of people, including consumers. Mm. But a lot of YouTubers were covering inconsistencies in how the day before was like copying. When they started showing what you were actually going to play, which was not indicative of what was shown, by the mm. way, in any of these charters. Like if you look at what, was, what came out, which I have a little, I put in quotes, review on my channel. If anyone wants to check it out, you can see what we got. Mm. And then if you look at what was shown off two years ago, oh my God, it's a totally, I'm not exaggerating, totally different game. Oh, damn. Totally different game. And so wow. um, when they started showing off what was actually on the way, there was number one, like brands in the video that were like ripped off, like CVS, UPS, FedEx, like they were, they were called like Red X or like BPS. <laughs> Same color scheme, same kind of logo layout, just oh, like no. different. Yeah, like AI art was being used, AI voice work was being used. Now, all this sounds like just quality issues, but like they were copying word for word, bar for bar, like the Red Dead Redemption 2 trailer voiceovers. They were copying Chill. Cyberpunk voiceover for the trailers. Like people were doing side by sides. Like, so there was a lot of red flags going into launch. Like, this isn't what we what was marketed. This is clearly like it's looking like a pump and dump. Like they are gonna sell this thing in skedaddle. And so they released the day before and then literally four days later said, we're closing down. We're out of money. Sorry. You can actually see through the steam tags. They changed the company name from fantastic to eight points. And then uh, they deleted all their trailers. All of the people working at fantastic. I put in quotes, all of them deleted their LinkedIn's their Twitter profiles. Chill. That's they crazy. ghosted from the internet. And the last comment we got when someone was like, oh, like you're, you know, ripping us off. They're like, it's our first big game. Shit happens. Like that was their response. Now, they've apparently also been working with Steam to get people refunds. But I something doesn't smell right here. 
this was not just a misfire. There were so many blatant red flags. This game should have never been allowed to market. Ever. Damn. Ever. Damn. And this goes back to what we talked about with like the PlayStation Store, the Nintendo Switch Store, like this garbage ransomware just making its way onto it's fucking so storefronts is insane to me, man. And at a certain point, it's like we got to regulate to a, a a level where like this was a this was a gaming is big enough that this was a cryptocurrency level pump and dump at the bare minimum attempt attempt. Maybe it wasn't successful. Maybe they actually didn't make money. Who knows? But this was an attempt. When your game fails, name me one second. I saw some people actually trying to fucking defend this. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, which is actually let's go actually insane, dude. Let's go. Name me one company that when their game failed, they shut down four <laughs> days later and fucking ghosted every, every shred of online material, every shred of anything they've done online, all gone. Just crumpled up, throwing the garbage can. Trailers from their channel yeah. deleted. Literally it everything like a, they you, gone. It sounds like a raid. Yo, the fence is here. Yo, we out. Yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> up. Pack up shop, boys. We got <laughs> out of there. They, the That's people wild. that worked for them by putting quotes were called unpaid volunteers. Like that, so many red flags. So I appreciate the industry for, on some level trying to like give them the benefit of the doubt. This is not your like, oh man, indie dev was trying to punch above their weight. Ah, they failed. And what man, the industry is so mean. Why are you celebrating their downfall? Like this, this was a blatant at the bare minimum attempt at a complete scam. And because it it was the number one wish listed game on Steam at one point. Oh wow. It had hype. This wasn't just like, oh, it's a really bad game. It had hype from what was initially shown. People were like, yo, the day before looks great. And as it got closer and closer to launch, people were like, this game's not going to come out. And then it did come out. And this is the result of it. So I, I think there are going to be lawsuits up the ass for them. I, I think it's going to be a, a, a fucking amazing story to track. But yeah, that's what's going on with the day before, dude. It Ooh. is a literal cryptocurrency level pump and dump attempt in our industry. And more than anything, it says to me how big the industry is that, Bro. that we are this big now that we got this level of scamming, like widespread mainstream scamming. That's crazy. Insane. What, what's funny is I saw some other developer teams published, making imitation mock statements that they did in, in parody of what these guys did. And yep. I was like, yo, this is getting serious. AZ, I think it was. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. It, this is this is really bad. It, that, that, it's just rotten. It, 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 it exposes a part of the industry that could happen, right? And how awful that is. Like, this is unacceptable. Like, I'm just, I, I caught like little tidbits here and there, but I didn't really dive into the story because I really had no interest in the game. But I know people that really, you know, were going hard for it. And, and this is this is pathetic. This is like, yo, you shutting down <laughs> four days after, mm -hmm. bro, what is that? And they're like, oh, we didn't, you know, we, we, we only took money for the crowdfunding or whatever. Bro. No, is... they, look, what's clear as day is they, they probably got money from the marketing deals they did. Yeah. A lot of it. They probably got money from the pre-orders. They, they, or they said they didn't accept pre-orders. They, they got right. money from somewhere. Enough where they just had to release this thing, shut it down, and run away. And that's what they're going to try to do. And I, I am curious if they actually get away with this. Yeah. Um, according to, though, the, the reason why I say it might be a failed scam is there was data shown on Steam, I think, or Reddit by Steam, that mm -hmm. shows, like, how many refunds have gone through for this game. And, like, yeah. they didn't really, if they tried to scam people, they didn't make much money on it at all. Gotcha. Um, they did. They seem to have made some money, but they did not make enough to to rip people up. But it's the fact that this attempt happened on such a mainstream right. level. We need to be cautious. I exactly. think we do. It's, it's, a, it's a cautionary tale, in my opinion. Right. And I wonder if it sets a legal precedent mm -hmm. as far as what could be done to prevent something like this. To, or maybe example before the action couldn't be taken against them because this is pathetically. Yeah, I think scam. you need to take action to set a precedent because I don't know the process necessarily of what you do to make sure a game is real because they probably handed them like a vertical slice. It's like here, it's a vertical slice of our game and, and like we're going to keep working towards it and the rest is, is going to be made later. And so you right. look at that, you're like, okay, got it. And like it's all about taking a bet, taking a chance and like mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like I could see how the confusion happened, but if if this does happen, then legal action, I imagine, I don't know, yeah. I'm not a professional, but like yeah. I imagine it's going to have to be taken. And if so, they're going to be made an example of, no doubt, because if they're not, then there's going to be more people who try to do it on like smaller levels of like right. mobile games and whatnot. It's going to become widespread. So absolutely, again, very cautionary tale here. Yeah. Last little bit of news, and then we'll get into what we're playing. Free Radical is being shut down by the Embracer Group after quietly working on the Time Splitters reboot for two years now. Jake Williams writes in, Hey, Maddie and Cog Embracer is at it again with the closing of Free Radical, the studio behind Time Splitters. This is just the latest casualty from the plethora of studios purchased by Embracer, uh, only to be closed down a few years later. After hearing the news, I began to wonder, when will this end? How many more studios will Embracer have to shut down before finally liquidating their assets and calling it quits? If so, when they do so, do you think a large company like Microsoft will swoop in and purchase any of the remaining studios in IP? Thanks and have a you dropped your elite controller and lost one of the sticks kind of day. I love where our heads are at here in the Xbox community. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but just I love where our heads are at here. We're all about the business. <laughs> Whoa, you dying over there? Oh, yeah. like, yo, it's a shame. Yo, it's it's we heard they crap. <laughs> we heard they going through tough times. So you ready for them to quiet? <laughs> <laughs> they be getting mad at me for even talking about it. So it's funny to see how the Xbox community, they be on it. They be like, yo, I heard they go through a str- stretch over there. They get rid of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, what, what, what can we say about a brace that we haven't already said, which is what was the plan, right? What was the long-term plan for all these acquisitions? Because now we're in this state where it's just asset after asset seems to be getting liquidated, getting let go. Um, to Jake's question, <laughs> um, yeah, of course, Microsoft's going to be looking at maybe some specific IP or a studio here and there. I'm curious about whatever happens to Crystal Dynamics, you know, in general. But um, yeah, I'm just more concerned about embracing this. I don't get it at all. I never understood what the long play was, right? Mm-hmm. And now we're starting to see the results of it. So yeah, I mean, I will, like I said, if the deal's good enough and there's something available, yeah, they'll swoop in. But actually, I'll say this. I'll push back on my own on, on my own Lord acquisition self. I will say that the block is still hot for Microsoft. And now that they've acquired ZMX and they've acquired um, ABK, my new guess, it'll be a while before they jump back in. So I know they, I know they said they are, but there's to me, I think there's still going to be like a, a little bit of a gap, whether it be a year two years or whatever it is unless it's just something that is completely oh my god we can't believe this is available situation i think they're going to chill just for a little bit get this transition stuff going and then you know whatever but we'll see we, we know mergers and acquisitions are very active out here in these streets yeah i feel bad for free radical i i just i mean at a certain point i i agree with like what jake is saying here about embrace just eventually just calling it quits because like you're getting rid of ip that can make you a lot of money like they're it's no longer they're cutting like the excess fat of like the 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 single a and the mobile studios that they've acquired in mass like they're cutting out like big games that could put them on the map here and we'll talk about what's going on with the kotor remake later like i think they're gonna i think they've lost that um and so, yeah, they're, I, I, I mean, they're, they're, they're getting rid of, rid of everything big and small. Um, so it's probably a scary time for anyone who's under the Embracer umbrella, but uh, this will continue to happen. And as for Microsoft getting involved, I think there's only one team under that umbrella that they want their hands on, and that's uh, Crystal Dynamics. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that they'll be very happy. Yeah, I agree. I think the block is hot. Mm. And yes, I think that, uh, you know, especially if like we've, re- we'll talk about Blade in a little bit too. Um, I think if there's a potential like, hey, FTC still trying to appeal, eyes are still on them. And, you know, oh, you got this big Marvel game that, by the way, on Mar- on the on the Marvel channel is four plus million views now. Like, oh, you got that exclusively. So oh, you, you're taking that away from platforms. Now. They're not that weak now. So it's possible. It's possible that, like, you know, you got to play weak. And I, I don't think we'll hear from them for a little bit because we don't even know what the plans are for Activision yet. Truthfully, like they didn't do a roundtable or anything. So. I'm not in the rush for any sort of new acquisition from from Xbox. I we know it's coming. Many people think we talk about it just as advocates, but again, they, they like the words of our good friend Hogue. They have beat the big bad with the biggest acquisition in gaming. They will be emboldened. They are going to acquire more. Just prepare yourselves. That's all we're saying. Prepare yourself. That's all we're saying. All right, Cog. 
It's you time know? for us to talk about what games we're playing. Sir, you have a longer list than I, so why don't you go yeah. first? Technically, it's the, the week of demos for me <laughs> on a lot of levels, you know what I'm saying, guys? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I want to start quickly with uh, Boulder's Gate because I want to tell you a little funny story to that. So pretty much, you know, I got started the game initially on um, Steam. I was playing it on my ally, well, just to get a feel of it. You know, had Maddie, I didn't even go lie to you. I never spent as much time in a character creator that I ever spent in this damn game. Me refining, getting this kind of warrior monk dwarf, mm. right? And I'm going with this whole martial arts combat style, yep. hand of the whatever. It's very key focused. So you build up this key meter and then I'm going into a very high, I think it's like de- dexterity and wisdom build, right? Mm. Which is like key for the monk. So I spent all this time. Yeah, I was still like toward the end of act one, but I wasn't, you know, far, but I, I, I was invested in that character. Right. So then obviously stuff comes out. We hear the Xbox one, the Xbox version is going to come. I'm like, I'm going to wait. Game of what's happened. We know whatever, whatever. I'm like, all right, it's time. Time to bring my monk over from Steve. Xbox, let's go. And I was scared to death with the problems I was having. Uh (laughs) So first off, um, I know right now the the whole save issue is the thing right now. But the first thing is I'm going to call myself an idiot because I did not know that it was going to be this convoluted to do this. So basically what you have to do is you have to go into launch. Like I launched up the Xbox and I'm like, yo, it said new game. And I'm like, all right, calm down. Log into my Larian account. I'm good. All right, logged in. Still, start a new game. I'm like, I am not starting over and making over a character that I really liked the build. I, and I went and spent hours. I'm, like, I'm not doing it. So right, let me research it. So now I go back to Steam, have to log into the game, which my Larian account is connected. And I'm like, okay, it sees my data there. You have to turn on cross-save in the options. Hmm. It's not on by default. All right, cool. Turn on. Syncing. All right, cool. Finish. Go back now. All right, we synced. We're in the cloud, connected to my account. We're done, right? We're done now. Go back to X5. All right, new game. Hell no, you ain't starting a new game. Where is my warrior monk with the hand of the open hand and all the key stuff? That I had? Nah, fam, I'm not doing that over again. So you get half. I to research. You gotta gotta go then go into Xbox and then go to ops and then turn on cross save. <laughs> and wow. bro, you gotta turn on cross save two times. Wow, what the hell? Yeah. It's not on by default on any platform that you're on and make sure your Larian account is connected and mm. then you got to connect it in the website of Larian. Bro, it's like four steps. Now, thankful that it exists. Thankful that it works. It does work by my man. You my got, man you, got is, you saved. More I got my save. So it's there. I'm, anybody who's in my scenario, I just want to give you guys a word of advice with that. So yeah, starting out, this game is it's so cool. It is so cool. It, it is... It is classic Bioware. I'm still trying to get this damn mind flare thing out of my head. What the hell is going on with this <laughs> thing? You know what I'm saying? But the, just I love the different approaches. The 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 dice rolls on decisions on on choices is as an extra complexity to the game that I really like. Um, using the, the terrain, I still feel kind of weak. So I'm gonna take your advice. Like I'm a hold in until I get to later on where I feel a little bit more powerful because I, I am struggling a little bit with the combat as far as like I don't feel like. I'm powerful yet, me and my team, you know, my team yet. So that's that. But the game is phenomenal. So I just wanted to shout that out. So Baldur's Gate is finally being started now. So we, we, we there. And then, um, what was our thing? Oh, yeah. So I finally got really to dig down into this uh, infinite wealth demo, man. Bro, if they keep this up, this might be an early contender for game of the year for me because I am laughing my behind off playing this game. This first of all, Hawaii is the perfect setting for this because it's new. They're acting like they um y- y- uh, Kazuka Ichiban is like like a tourist in a way. So like, what cool thing is that like all the, the first of all, the new characters are dope. There's this one character. He's like a cabbie. He's like he's like an Uber driver that that went bad. That now is going good. He's on your side. It's hilarious. Then they got this like I don't call her like a Pilates instructor or something. She she's like this dancing tango dancing chick. Her her special moves literally have you doing a tango with the enemy and then spinning <laughs> them around and clotheslining multiple. Bro, it is hilarious. This game is all cinematic and all foolish. Like it is complete. 
tomfoolery. You are out there on these little segways, moving around. Yeah. You can fast travel with the city. You got that. Then, I, why? All right, so the cool thing about the game is the bond system is back, but it's really more in depth. So now, before, if you play like a dragon, you mess around with people, hey, they'd be like, hey, I want to talk to you. They have a little dot over their head. You know what I'm saying? And you go over to them, you talk to them, and you start learning more. And you have like a natural dialogue between Ichiban and the character you're learning about. So one of the one was like a cab character. He was like, yo, you, you said you used to go around, um, you know, Hawaii, Yaki, you know, like that. He's like, yeah, yeah, I used to do that. And he, you, you start the bond. So then it opens up this bingo game of all these other things that you could do to get to get closer with the character that you haven't unlocked yet. And then there's other things that'll be like, he ain't really to tell you that until you learn more. So the bond system has really gotten deep for each character and has specific rewards. Dope. Fighting. I just learned about these things, these tag team moves that are crazy. So you got your standard attacks, you got your skills, each character, but then they got these tag team moves where it's like, hey, you and Kiryu do something, you and the the cab driver do something. They're dynamic, cinematic, dope moves. Then they got stuff with the team. Bro, they're going all out with the over-the-top nature. They're taking the JRPG. Bro, Pound Mates is back. Remember Pound oh, Mates? Yeah. Remember? Pa- out of control. Out of control, hilarious. Then this is the wildest joint they got. So one of the characters was like, yo, you got a ball with me. You know, I, you know, you could do this, this uh trolley, these tourist trolleys. Oh my god. No, how man. big is this demo? Like, how long do you get to spend with Bro, this? Bro, you get to rock. You get it's, it is two. There's a, there's like a story demo that's very short because they don't want to spoil much of the story of how Kiryu and him link. They just get to a right, little right, part right. of it, and then you fight one kind. It's kind of dope. Then they got like kind of like an open world demo to kind of get a feel of how oh, it is to be in Waikiki. The final game. Um, I don't think so. I think it's completely separate. But it, it, it's it's. It was worth me playing like a dragon guide and beating it for this. It is that good. Wow. Bro, why they, you know, when it comes to RGG, we got to give them this, Maddie. They are the kings of the mini game. Yeah. Remember the old mini game? Bro, why they got a game you want a trolley? So you get on a trolley as an old man, and he got a camera, right? So you go, hey, old man, what's going on? He's like, I'm new to Hawaii. You know, you itch your with his foolish self, right? I'm new, hey, bro, guy. So he's like, hey, yeah, I'm just taking pictures. You want to see? I just take, take a, you know, a, a, a photograph Hawaii on this trolley. So you go through this man's photo why he got nothing but beefy, scantily clad men on his thing. All his all his photos. So Ichiban said, "Yo, bro, what's what the hell is going on? What are you doing?" <laughs> so he's like, "Yeah, I, I go around town filming the sickos and all the sickos of the city. <laughs> it's called Sicko Hunt, right? Get this, it, it gets worse, man. This game is ridiculous." He's like, yeah, and I worked with the cops because these sickos running around Hawaii, and my job was to take these photos <laughs> of these men and report it to the police. You too can help me out with the sicko catching game. Why? It's like you ever played Duck Hunt? Which one? Nintendo back, all right, you ever played Duck Hunt back in the game? It's oh, a oh yeah, 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 yeah. And remember how the thing that the dog and the stuff will pop up. You got to why yeah. you have oh, no. to play catch a sicko in Hawaii <laughs> while did you on a trip. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. This is re- crazy. Catch a sickle, and sometimes they in the bushes. So, and then you got to catch them doing moves and, and, and doing... <laughs> no, yes! no. They going all the way with this, man. I'm like, this game is out of pocket. <laughs> Hilarious. Again, all in the course of a demo. Highly recommend, but the fighting is Oh my God, it's a mech. Kiryu is so good, so good. But look, and the leg I will say is that it, I don't know if you want something, something, something going on with your man. I don't want to know. Okay, I believe oh. it at that. So yeah, they they are definitely alluding, and um, yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be funny, heartfelt combat's great. They're taking the JRPG turn base to the next level. It's going to be a ride. I can already see. And I, I just want to know how the old guy is going to get back into it. The numbers, the, um, you know, all my people, you know what I'm saying? Adachi. No numbers just going to get thrown into it, right? Like, oh, no, nah, yeah. They're going to somehow get on a plane and, and come over there because you, you see, you know, they're coming. So, yeah, look, I got to stop playing the demo now because it's too good. And I don't want, I got to wait for the fall and nothing's going to carry over. Yeah. And the last thing is uh, Tekken, man. Um, I don't know if you know this. The Tekken 8 demo is coming full story mode. I don't know. Have you saw that story trailer yet? 
I did. I wanted to ask you all about this stuff because I saw that I was thinking of you. I was I was listening to the previews and stuff, and I was watching closely. I was thinking of you. I was like, okay, like this looks like it's got the focus and the production value. Like, is this Bro. from what you're hearing from the? I don't know if you did. You watch any of the previews yes, that went up? I've, I've watched. I've I've seen. Okay, so Absolutely. how are you feeling about what's being said about this game? I heard it's like a little bit longer than Tekken 7. Tekken 7 wasn't that long, though. Right. But this, you know, if they're going like the full production value route, like is that what you're looking for? It looks like they are pulling out all the stops. I, I've spoken to many people I trust that are hardcore. Did, no, no hyperbole. This is shaping up to be the greatest Tekken of all time. Because it does kind of have that feel, dude. Like I've been watching the gameplay and so I'm like, Sorry, let me steal your thunder. I'm just no, like, wow, no. this looks like an amazing game, though. Like, I've loved Tekken for years, but like, this looks special. They're going back to their roots. They've taken the Mortal Kombat feedback. They realize they've been usurped. They're going with full cinematic stories for each chapter. What I like is they're also doing the character episodes for the separate characters as well. But it looks like every main character is going to have involvement in the story on some level. Mm. So they're going back to the six roots on that. Then, like, bro, the way they're doing the story, the fight between Jin and Kazi in the beginning, it, it's it's almost like a world event. It, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but the demo will be out this week as a recording. You guys will have it. They, they let you play a couple characters, letting you do the story mode. Not only in addition to the story mode, not in only, which is all cinematic, not only in addition to the character episode for each specific character, which I understand might be all cinematic as well, they are also doing this arcade thing for the multiplayer where the game, this has some of the best onboarding for a fighting game I've ever seen. When you make an avatar, you go into their little world to, to do the arcade stuff, mm -hmm. but they're training you on the game. Every, I'm talking about complex yeah. aspects of Tekken, yeah, yeah. deep level stuff, man. And, and graphically, it's not, it's, I just got to keep it right. Mortal Kombat, you look phenomenal. <laughs> do you do. But there are levels to this. Tekken is outside. If this could and the oh the ghost battle. So let's just say those battles look amazing, bro. Bro, they talk about now you're gonna the like the level it, but, in this game is gonna be so high. You cannot sleep on this game because yes. this the ghost battles are gonna make everyone bro. better. And it's gonna be so tough. If you take a break like you did for Tekken 7, when you come back, I mean it's gonna be easier to get into it essentially because you have the ghost, but bro, everyone's bro. gonna be training with that stuff. So like I'm very excited to see how now, sweaty now, things get. Now, this is where we got to talk about the positives of AI. Now, Lord AI, I'm going to be for a little Duke AI for a little bit. Okay. Bro, this ghost system that they're utilizing is so complex and so the tendencies are so crazy. And then it's learned, bro, people are raving about this. So if you fought me and you're like, damn, I can't beat Cogs, harangue, and this, mm -hmm. that's me, you downloading. Mm -hmm. and you are playing and, and getting better and so on and so and everybody you could do that with the top players and all it is is getting crazy so we'll yeah. see i'm super hyped so i've been shopping it up seven and uh lee chow lang uh I believe, oh yoshimitsu dropped today i saw that so, yeah Yosh, i thought they were done with character edition no, so like they just keep still adding more and more it feels like what it is is they they reveal the whole roster but there's still about 10 characters that never got their own separate trailers yet you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's, so it's the Steve Foxes, uh, whatever, yeah. Um, Yoshimitsu was today, and then I think next, I'm waiting for my man Lee Chow Lang because he, he looks really good. But yeah, look, a lot of people are playing it already, you know. And Namco's going to do a, some other story thing with Austin Creed, the wrestler guy. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's a big thing tomorrow, bro. They're going to a lot, and they're going to give you a demo. They are confident. Get ready, Tekken's coming. I will be playing that demo. Yes, yes. So that's pretty much been it for me as far as like game stuff. But uh, I see what you. Uh, I'm surprised by this. I gotta hear this story. This game you have listed. Yeah, I uh, like I mentioned at the top of the episode. I've been working a lot, so I really haven't had time for my single player groove. So I've had to go to multiplayer with a recent shadow drop that I was had on my list and the way they dropped it i was like okay like now is a good time like let me just check this out it's just been a nightly little groove once i'm done with all of my work and that is the finals mm. um this for those who don't know was dropped during the game awards at the tail end season one is out now um it comes from the developers embark i believe is their name okay. okay and they're comprised of a lot of former battlefield devs 
Now, one thing I don't talk a lot about in my first person shooting lineage is how much I really, like when I was tired of Call of Duty, I defected the Battlefield. I'm talking about the early like Battlefield, Bad Company 2, right. Battlefield 3. Uh, specifically, Bad Company 2, I have a real lot of love for because of the focus on destruction. Now, the way they evolved the destruction in future Battlefield games wasn't bad. Like you get Levolution in Battlefield 4, which is this massive, large scale, like buildings collapsing. And I know 2042 is apparently bounced back I haven't played it at all, but like I know like the dynamic weather through the maps, like that's kind of there's always something happening in these games that shifts the way you play. But what I always loved is what I think many of the OGs love, which is like you can destroy that wall. You can take that building down. The objective, which is placed in this room, can be on the first floor of that building now. And you strategize around that. You react to that. And so when I saw the finals, um, a lot of YouTubers did previews of it. I remember talking to Skill Up about it because he was like pretty big on it. I was like, this looks awesome. Like, this is what I've, I'm not saying this at a hyperbole. This is what I've wanted from shooters for a while. Like, mm. it's been since Halo Infinite that I've really had a shooter that spoke to me and sparked me. And before that, God knows when. But like, this feels like it's going to stick. I'll get into why. But Ooh. for those who uh, don't know, the finals is this fully destructible physics based first person shooter. Uh, with three class types, you have light, medium, and heavy, um, each with different roles, each with different abilities, different guns, different gadgets. And um, I just like, dude, it is so fun. Just how yeah. dynamic every match is. Like, oh, you play as the heavy, and he has like a ground and pound ability. So let's say I'm running along the rooftops of Monaco. And I see that the objective B is in that building, and like I see that someone's cashing out. I could be like, "All right, we're going in through the roof and just jump and break right down <laughs> through the floor and through another set of floors." Like you, it's such an empowering first-person shooter because Ooh. the map is just your toy box. You can break through like every wall, collapse any building, wow. and set up your own like bunkers where. You can like break walls around you for cover. I mean, what they have here is so fun because every match is different. Every match is different. And, and it's like just creative map usage as well. There will sometimes be these platforms that are floating around the edge of the map and they'll like put a cash out on there. So there will be points like on the, uh, for those who have played the game, there's a map based in Seoul um, where like it like the the cash out will be floating around platforms on the surrounding skyscrapers, and bro, you'll be like running down, sliding down huge buildings, leaping off of them, and trying to reach this platform that's floating around buildings, and it's like the most dynamic, crazy yet fun and satisfying firefights. Like it is mm -hmm. a blast, man. It absolutely wow. is. It's a three v three v three game, but depending on what mode you play, it could also be four v four v four v four. I think. Or maybe 3v3 times 4. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, there's two modes. There's Quick Cash, and then there's another one that I forget the name of, but Quick Cash is like what I described. You, you get money from a vault, you bring it to a cash out point, and uh, you have to protect the cash out point. So that mode, as the game has evolved a bit, some people play the game where it's the most fun, which is like dynamic mm -hmm. shooting, breaking down walls, just crazy chaos, made the best man win. Right. Some people are making the game a little whack. And they like, I'm talking, they set up, they put a bubble shield down, three fucking turrets all over the room, fucking gas mines. Like, it's just, they can make those types of people. If you're one of them, you're listening, you make the game fucking insufferable. Go away. Go play yeah. something else. Just some siege dudes. Some Rainbow Six yeah. siege dudes. <laughs> yeah, go play something else. Get fail, get filtered, get phased out of the game. You make it horrible. Oh, like I played damn. one of them last night. It was just one. I've had great matches otherwise, but I played this one group. I was like, oh. They're going to start a wave because what happens is you play that group and you're like, damn, I'm going to play that way now. It's well, like that's the way. Yes, the you are yeah, an yeah, infection yeah. on the game. Like that <sighs> is what happens. You are an infection on the game and you ruin the rest of it. So I hope to God that this doesn't pollute the game because right now I'm in a good spot. Like this is okay. a fun first person shooter, but it's also like a dream FPS. Like I said, that physics based environmental destructibility, not just in tools, but like running through walls. Like it's just so free and fun like i don't even have to do good i just have a ton of fun playing the game so yeah the finals has been fantastic it's been the only game i'm playing this week because it's just like who's the who's the squad tonight what three people want to get together uh, i recommend playing in that manner if you can 
I, I tried playing the finals with just me and a buddy of mine and we queued up with a random and it just, you gotta be okay with losing. It's just not. Yeah. With the random. The yeah. It's not the same, but yeah, the finals has, has been great. Uh, I haven't wanted to pay for anything the, the cosmetics suck, but you know, there's, there's cool ones that you can pay for, but like you, you can play the game entirely for free. Um, my main critique has nothing okay. to do with the gameplay. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, I, I was like, I heard you in my head. I was like, all of these voice actors are AI. I was like, <laughs> you heard the AI kicking in. And we knew it before launch. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, it's placeholder. Oh, they announced it. Oh, they announced I like, it. I was like, oh, it's placeholder. And then it's like in the full game, I'm like, oh, like why? Like why is it everything I love, man? Like there's always something. <laughs> Back up. So, what, what, give me an example of the lines that they go. Oh, the stuff. lines are like the guy sounds okay. Have you you've played like the midway sports games? Yeah, sounds like that dude. But AI, Wait, we also like like NBA Jam. Yeah, a little up. bit. Right? Like, he's not a play by play commentator. He's like, and the underdogs have now taken control of point A. Like it's cool, but like you could hear like the splices in the words and shit. I'm oh, okay, like, okay, you hear splices. Yeah. yeah. It's like we're not there yet, and okay. it's also like that icky feeling of like, man, I was just like going hard against AI, and here's this game I really yeah, right, like. right on time, right on time, yeah, baby. really <laughs> like, and I kind of feel like I got to make the exception for it because otherwise, <laughs> this division of AI, which I'm very strongly against, because you're not giving voice actors work, I'm also like, game kind of fun though. Like this game kind of hurt though. I mean, we gonna see. Right, let, I me mean, it, it, right, let me have it. Let me have it. No, no, I mean. I'm shocked it is this early. <laughs> I didn't expect it either. I was like, what the fuck yeah. is this, man? Like, I thought I had a couple of years before this happened that I could Bro, prepare it, my argument. I have no idea what to say one week later. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It, it is interesting. It, it, it's like what we discussed. There's going to be companies that utilize it in very cool ways. It is going to be companies that's going to utilize it in bad ways. And it is up to us to determine what it is. But yeah, if it's going to save them development costs, I, I think it is. I'm curious also, Um, I don't know, have you... How do you feel about Street Fighters? I'm not confirming it. It is, but how do you feel about Street Fighter Six's um commentary? Have you heard like their commentary during the during the I match? I actually have not bit? played Street Fighter Six. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, because they have like a like an esports level kind of commentary while you're fighting and stuff like that. So again, some implementation is going to be good, some are going to be bad. I, now I got to play the finals. It's I got not this. bad. That's the thing. It's not bad. It's just no. You can once you know it's not human, which I could tell right yeah. away. It sticks out to you a little bit. You're kind of mm-hmm. thinking about it. And I can't imagine for how successful this game is going to be. And even if it wasn't primed for success, like the play by play, there's not so many line variations that I feel like it needed AI. You know what I'm saying? I, do, I don't think it needed to do that. So it, it feels unnecessary and kind of detracts from the spirit of the product, which is like this very much like corporate controlled world. Like what's cool is when you spot on the maps, like I mentioned Monaco, like you'll see there's like a whole crowd in a floating circle around the entire arena Ooh. and it's awesome like I, I it's not like a bloody shooter it's it's all um coins like it's all yeah. about money um they, they have a las vegas map the the weather by the way another battlefield ass thing about this game beyond its gunplay like the weather um it's like super dynamic so maps will feel different like the las vegas map i mentioned like there's like a sunny map there's the the the, uh raining map but dude then there's one where it's been completely destroyed by uh like a sandstorm and so like certain parts of the map are filled with sand in the streets so it's a dynamic giant you can run up the side of buildings i'm like this is awesome like this game is so good already i don't know how they screwed up moving down the line i hope they don't but like Dude, they got me like hook, line, and sinker. Like, it's definitely because here's the thing is, like, you know, they've got one when like the whole group is on it, the whole group, and everyone I was like, lock it on. Was rocking? Yeah, like everyone's getting on it. Everyone's getting on. Like, we're always squatting up so much so that this game needs a 4v4 or 5v5. Like, they need modes with bigger teams because it's like, we're getting left out. It's like, all right, I guess I'll go play something else tonight. Like, uh, you know, like, yeah, I guess you I'll go play the finals. Dude, yeah. You don't want to squat up by yourself. Like, it yeah, sucks. Of course. Swag. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It says, yeah, the game uses a uh, vo- popular voice actor, Giano uh, Matragano, um, us- utilizing text-to-speech voice acting where they try to cap- capture the show's format. They said the voice acting has gotten better from the initial beta, but they said, obviously, it was people that noticed it, you know, with it, a few AI spec, and they said, um, apparently embarks audio team members believe AI text to speech production allows us to be extremely reactive to new ideas in a 
Well, you ain't gonna like this sentence. Don't don't kill this game for me. Do I want to hear this? You, I gotta tell you the truth, bro. Uh, Embark's audio team members believe AI's tech to speech production allows us to be extremely reactive to new ideas in a way far superior to hiring human voice actors. If a games designer comes up with a new idea for a game mode, we could have a voiceover representing that in just a matter of hours instead of months. Audio designer Andreas, I can't pronounce his last name, said to PC Gamer, making games. Wow, without acting is not a not an end game, not isn't an end goal, but they are very happy with the tailoring and on the fly usage. It seems interesting. Hmm. Wow, this is interesting. I didn't know. <laughs> Maddie's like, I'm funding my destruction. <laughs> Maddie's disgusting. He said, I can't. See, I knew they was gonna sneak it in on us or something. I didn't know it was going that quickly. I didn't know the finals had this. Part yeah. of me is intrigued. I want to play this game to see. Wow, that's crazy. Interesting. Does it count if I mute the commentator? Like, can, can that be my way of fighting back? Like, does that count? Fight back. Does that count? Because, like, I don't I need can. to hear the play by play. We're going to see. We're going to see how far the, the rabbit hole goes. <laughs> Shout out to Daddy in one week. <laughs> so gracious in victory. So good. It's all good. Funny games. Funny games. We've got one warm-up question, and then we get into the news. Liskin, congrats. You're the only question. Hey, Duke, do you think OD is Kojima's scrapped Silent Hill game with a different name? The PT door was shown as an obvious hint, but the letters in Udo Kier's mouth that translate to Silent Hill and OD referencing Overdose Delusion song in Silent Hill 2 are crazy. Also, I find it hilarious that more people were talking about Abandon being Kojima's Silent Hill than they are this. Have a, it must be that Xbox tax kind of day. This guy doesn't have an argument. Uh, oh. <laughs> I have an argument because I'm like, yeah, this is pretty fucking crazy. Like, I don't know if you've looked, but you'll mm. see like as he's talking, there's like letters showing up in different parts of wow. his mouth. And it spelled out a word in Japanese that when translated is like Silent Hill. Mm. And so, Kojima, we know Kojima. We know Kojima. That's, it's not an accident. So mm-hmm. it's not going to go Silent Hill by name. Right. But I think this is okay. So I connect Kojima and, and uh, Tetsuya Nomura in this really weird way. Let's go. Tetsuya Nomura was working on this game, Final Fantasy Versus 13, in like 2006. I got shut down and eventually turned into Final Fantasy 15, right? Mm-hmm. But the spirit of Versus 13 was completely lost. The gameplay mechanics of Versus 13 were completely lost. And now you look at what's happening with Kingdom Hearts 4. And even though it's not Versus 13, through Kingdom Hearts 3 with like Varum Rex and like all these characters, the trailer similarities, like they're bringing back versus 13 through Kingdom Hearts. I think that's what's happening with Kojima here in Overdose. They're bringing back PT, all the famous actors, everything through Overdose. It will not be PT. It will not have the same famous name, but it will absolutely, the fact that they're not calling it, by the way, Overdose, they're just calling it OD. OD, yes. PT, OD. I just, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like even that alone, uh, I'm sure we'll have some meaning down the line. So yeah. uh, I'm curious, Cog, what you think of this, that that Xbox may be saving something that otherwise is lost. It's one of the most famous gaming demos of all time, the PT oh, demo on PlayStation 4. Yeah. Uh, that was incredible. I mean, there were people <gasps> digging up secrets in that game for like over a year. Yeah. Well, to this day, even. To this day, bro, I remember. It's like, it's like if you have that downloaded on your PlayStation, like it, it's more valuable. Like you can't get rid of it. Like that's special. Yeah, shout out to my homie, um, Lord Swat, his wife. Basically, he's one of the original Iron Lords before uh, King and Soft came on. Mm. And um, he no, there was the, original Iron Lords. Yeah, the OG, the OG Iron Lord. Shout out okay. to Lord Sleet. Shout out to Lord Swat. Swat is in Texas now. He got married to my homegirl Panda, and she is the biggest Kojima fan. I'm talking about like. The one who puts all the conspiracy theories together, know every project he's working on. Like she is so hard, come on, Kojima. So I remember at the time they didn't have a PlayStation Four, and I was getting. Oh, I remember now. I was getting the Pro. I was getting the PS Four Pro. Mm-hmm. Cause you know me, Carl, I gotta stay on top of it. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, "Yo, we're trying to get a PlayStation." I'm like, "Yo, you want to <laughs> buy? You know, you can buy mine, kind of thing." And they were like, "Um, yeah, you know how much? I gave them a fair price, but then." She was like, you wouldn't happen to have the, the demo for PT? And I'm like, oh, yeah. She was like, oh, my God, you still have that? I was like, because I had heard that, like, you couldn't download it from the thing no more, oh, the store yeah. no more. So it was like a high vest. I was like, well, if you want to 
throwing a little extra, you know, on top of that for that. Uh, they were like, oh, we got you. We'll hook you up, Carl. Don't even worry about it. We got you. So I hooked him. I didn't overcharge him crazy. You know what I'm saying? But it was a thing. But to, the, to this point, yeah, like the minute they were on stage, Manny, and I saw them come through that PT door, and I remember that door. I was like, yo. Mm. They, they 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 reference it okay yeah, yeah. and look it it i will say this again I, i'm not the, the biggest kojima guy like that but i will say like it is something i need something for them to have a horror game and if it goes if it has like a spiritual success or some type of interlinking yeah. with pt this is going to be huge yeah. it's going to be huge and um I, i'm thinking about my man shout out my man miles don't fear he's such a horror guy like he must be going crazy right oh, now. i gotta God. speak to him that was probably a show for the ages between mana and that for him yeah bro he, I, 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 romantic, and then me with sega and yeah. then i get a superhero game so like xbox is all over popping for me i was like i don't care what nobody said. i got what i want <laughs> you know i was in my selfish bag <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah no this is this is big this is big i do agree with um Pliskin. I think there's a lot of deep cuts here in typical Kojima fashion. So, yeah, we, we got to see where this is going to go, man. But, yeah, Silent Hill, you know, the the, the, the wordplay. And I will say the graphics on these faces were kind of crazy. Like they were. I thought it was wild. just human faces. I'll be honest. I, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know until afterwards. Bro. I was like, oh, that was actually yeah. part of the game. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're playing with that sort of tech here. All right, I can get down with that. This yeah. As they described it, it's a horror game, but also a movie, but also a totally new type of experience. Whatever yeah. that ends up being, I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see what it is when it comes yeah. out. <laughs> All right, let's get into the news. Let's do it. Number one is a big highlight around the Xbox community. After many questions, Disney has responded to the inquiry surrounding Blade's exclusivity. Sean Shoptaw. Disney's head of gaming started things off by addressing the situation around Indiana Jones first and explaining why that was exclusive when speaking to Axios. He said, quote, with Xbox still being one of the bigger marketplaces for games, we didn't feel like we were going to be overly exclusionary. We felt like it's still going to reach a broad set of folks, and we felt financially and strategically for the game that made sense at the time, end quote. As for Marvel's Blade, we only have a tweet from the reporter who conducted the interview at Axios, Stephen Totillo, who says, quote, we spoke before it was announced, it being Blade. He only hinted to me that I'd be hearing about another dream project that came from the studio involved uh, for more than Disney, a la Indy 2. But the reveal was hours later, and when I followed up, Disney told me, that's a question for Bethesda, end quote, in regards to the exclusivity, might I add. This only, make th- only makes things quite the dead end, as the latest update we have for Blade's exclusivity from Bethesda was when they declined to comment on the matter. Now, on a separate note, I said to jam this one in here. Sean also had this to say about the KOTOR remake, quote, not a lot I can say, but KOTOR is obviously an incredibly popular game, one that we are incredibly proud of, and I think that there's still a lot of demand for. I'll leave it there, end quote. So to me, this sounds like the beginning of shopping around. I think they are going to bring mm. this elsewhere and find a new partner and mm. developer for okay. the KOTOR remake. Okay. Xbox, I'm telling you, pick up the hey. phone, hey. please. So... <laughs> With that, Cog, Mm -hmm. we have the situation with Blade. Big conversation surrounding its exclusivity. This is the first official comment we really got on the matter in that it's up to Bethesda. Bethesda's like, no comment, no comment. Now, a lot of our write-ins have provided context. For starters, all of the Marvel trailers did not have any of these starting uh, iconography showing Xbox or whatever. So there's that. Same thing applies for Bethesda with their reveal trailers. They did not have consoles before or after. So this does seem to be status quo. But since it's, I think, speaking to the demand from the Xbox fan base for so long, like give us a Marvel exclusive of a high quality from one of your better first party studios. And they're getting that. So now it's the question of like, we need answers. Like we need Game Pass. We need Xbox branding. We need that. So what do you make, of course, of what Sean Shoptaw had yeah. to say about both Indiana Jones and Blade. And mm-hmm. uh, has anything changed? Do you think this is going to end up being exclusive? Yeah, well, the interesting thing is today, the Xbox account puts out the trailer yeah. of Microsoft with logo and branding. Yeah. <laughs> so they immediately seem to get in front of that, which is interesting. So it's funny what a trailer could do. And obviously to, to date, 
we don't have a PlayStation equivalent, right? So to Sean's um, question, I thought it was very interesting comments. Um, to me, the comment, the sentence of the of the thing is is, you know, with Xbox still being one of the biggest marketplaces for games, we didn't feel like we we're going to be overly exclusionary. So to me. That says, hey, we're comfortable with it being just on Xbox and PC, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. We're comfortable with it. We don't feel that's exclusion over exclusionary, right? That verbiage to me says, yo, we we're comfortable with that, and the bag says it's that. <laughs> yeah. I look at it this way, right? Yeah. So we, were, we were talking about this in the LSM chat because Colin was <laughs> going, Colin was actually fired up about this. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of couple command is it? Yeah, <laughs> it'll be a fun chat on like a crossover episode. Yeah, the crossover, right? fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was like pretty fired up about it. And mm -hmm. I think based off this quote, what I can tell is this, like PlayStation, they don't feel overly exclusionary about because PlayStation, you have a massive install base, right? Like you have a ton of consoles sold. Yes. Xbox is probably not overly exclusionary because it's not linear in that explanation of like, for them, it's probably like game pass, PC, PC, Xbox. streaming to well, phones, exactly. consoles, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think mm -hmm. that's the gateway to Xbox exclusivity is like, okay, we're not, it's exclusive to the ecosystem, but like we're still on multiple platforms. We're still right. pretty out there. Just like PlayStation, it's, it's like, yeah, you're on this walled garden, but, but it's a pretty big, big walled, walled garden, garden, right? Facts, so like there's facts. a lot of you out here. So like Absolutely. most of you are going to get this experience and it adds value to the PlayStation platform. So um, I, I think that's kind of the rationale behind it. I think that's yeah. why they're going to do Xbox just like they would do uh, PlayStation. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I think it's going to be exclusive. I, I, I don't, like Aaron Greenberg changed his profile picture to like Blade with the glasses. Yeah, with the glasses with the X. Then the lead, yeah. But then he removed it. Yeah, yeah. I said, I'm like, what are that. you guys? I, I will say this. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, either say something directly, Fair. Greenberg Fair. and company, or don't. Fair. But this fucking mixed messaging teasing, like, I, I know there was one, there's been a lot of people who feel like this is part of Xbox's plan. Like, Someone oh, they're trying that, to build yeah. up the conversation because they know the Xbox tax is in full effect and like they're not, <laughs> they're not going to get the coverage if they're like, yeah, this is it. But I don't know, like the trailer's doing really well. I don't think mm -hmm. this is some galaxy brain play from Xbox <sighs> to get coverage and media attention. Like they announced a fucking Marvel. They arguably announced the biggest game True. of the show. I mean, we we do have to take, we had this discussion on RP. Oh, you, you're on fire. You, you and Attic are a lockstep. Where he's like, yo, bro, like just oh, put your chest on it, say it, and whatever, whatever, right? So fair. I I I'm with you. I would love the definitive answer so we don't have to play these games and mm -hmm. you know put glasses with X's and whatever, whatever, and then one minute, you know, not. So this is what I say that King has made a good point in counter. We had one of the arguments of the ages on ILP. Like everyone had their position on this. So King's thing, and 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 I do understand what he's saying is that we do have to understand it's also literally the case is going on with the FTC appealing said thing, yeah. right? So the reality is it's like, oh, you see? Look what they do. They got Marvel. These are the practices that we're trying to stop, right? Because on one hand, they're saying that, you know, Tim Stewart is saying, you know, for everyone. And the other hand, look at the thing. So it could be a little bit going on that. But honestly, I still, I stand by what I said last week. I still think this is Xbox deferring to Bethesda in the role of a publisher. I still feel that Microsoft's, we do know from the internal documents that leaked that Pete Hines and other people had issues with saying out the back, yo, you ain't not getting Starfield. Hey, they're not getting Redfall because Bethesda has traditionally operated in a very open fashion and they kind of do how they want to do yeah. from a marketing, from a PR. Look, when you, me and you both know, we could say this part, like when you deal with, but that, like say if you deal with that's now that they're owned by Microsoft, you go to Microsoft, they're going to send you to Bethesda. Yeah. Like it's not, they, 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 they are. The, my hopes were so high with that too. I was like, oh, thank God. Like I don't got to deal with Bethesda. I might actually get a review code. <laughs> they're like, go to Bethesda. I'm like, fuck. Because <laughs> Bethesda is still in control. And this is, this is what I think is the byproduct of acquisition. In order for Microsoft to make these acquisitions, this, again, this is just a cog theory. I could be proven wrong. This is how I feel based on their movement. In order for them to get these acquisitions done on a publisher level, they still have to operate independently on some level. Now, ultimately, where I defer to King, hmm. the end of the day, the buck does stop here. 
Mm. So if something gets out of pocket or something they go and put the foot down, ideally, at the end, Microsoft will have the end all set and all decision. The other thing we have to discover is also, you know, we have to admit this game is just starting to develop. Dinga and the team, I don't know if you've been following his, his Twitter, been popping. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, let us cook, give us time. So, what I get from that is also, not that you're scared to put a logo, I don't think this, but that, I think Bethesda is just operating the way they want to operate. And they'll tell us when they want to tell us. But also, if this is at the end of the generation, platform wise, maybe it's it, like you said, launch of the new Yeah, you Xbox. don't even know it's this system. You can't put we, Xbox we can't series on it. If, you can't, can't put Game Pass on it even. Exactly. We, we don't know. This thing could be what, 2020? What are we, 2028, 2029? Like, you know? So that that could be a part of it. But I, again, my final theory, it's exclusive. There's a little bit of a shell game being played. I do feel it is Bethesda that is doing this. Yeah. I really, in my heart, feel I feel that Xbox, if they want to be a, a, a tough boss and say, yo, put the damn logo on and stop playing. Because I do find it interesting the trailer came out the next day after the backlash, though. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah. But it's Bethesda's well, call. That's and the I, weird part, bro. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't that on their channel? Yes. Like, why did that come out so late in general? If it's third party, even, right? If it's going right. on all platforms, why didn't you have it? There's it was something weird about all of that. It's still a little bit I it's still a little bit of a mixed message. I can't make excuses for it. It's still a bit of a mixed message. Yeah, not but, that you should, by the way. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I'm just no one has the answer to that. Like, why right. wasn't that there? Like, I feel like right. you'd be even if like just by general association, like mm-hmm. let's say it goes multi-plat. Yes. You own Bethesda. Don't you just want the association to be with you? Like Absolutely. I know you'd get money even if it's on PlayStation, but don't you just want to be associated True. with you? Like this I, is our I, thing. I think it gives tremendous value to say it's just you. Yeah. I don't know the reasoning why they feel the need to leave if it's Bethesda's call to leave it open ended. I don't know why. I do all I could go is by the evidence that we've seen. We do, we saw with those Pete Hine email. There was some back and forth about yeah, you know I don't them, yeah. yeah I don't know how I feel about what are we going to tell our teams that Starfield's exclusive. Yeah. So that means there's pushback. You're operating from a multi platform always perspective. That's how you used to rock. But guess what? There's a new boss in town, and there are theories. I'm not going to go too deep, but you know there are theories out there as to Pete Hines' departure. I, I, I can't go to Man City retiring, he retiring. But we have on record that he did not feel certain things once they were acquired in the way they were being told to move. So we shall see. We shall see. Yeah, I I, I just know that Xbox will be in for a, a world of anger if they just <laughs> let this one slip through. I don't think they're going to, but just on, right. on the fact that it's not confirmed is just definitely a little disconcerting. But yeah, I yeah. I, I personally think it's it's going to be exclusive. Yeah. I, feel, I feel pretty pretty comfortable with that, and um, they would just be foolish to let it slip. So I don't think they're going to let it go by like one way or the other. Because when you look at this, right, like <clears throat> we have to go back in time to a place where we were more ignorant pre Redfall launch when we had learned there was a canceled PS5 version. Like there was the kind of damage control afterwards. Of like no no no, we didn't delete that. That just never existed. I'm like oh, bullshit. You know it. <laughs> Same thing with Starfield. It's yep. like, no, no, no. Like, so if you're telling me that they are not going to jump at the chance for like, oh, from the ground up, our own thing on our platform, get on over here. Like they're, they're going to do it. This is why like, <clears throat> you know, we can't throw the whole kitchen sink with it. Like Matt Booty overseeing Xbox Game Studios and Bethesda. Like, I think it's for these types of moments here. Um, is it a missed opportunity in the terms of branding and announcement? I think so. Mm-hmm. I think fans of the platform should be critical of that, but I don't think when push comes to shove and it's gameplay time, like I, I just, I look at it two ways. Like you're going to get that brand association down the line. No doubt about it. I just feel like we talked about just the week before, or I think the episode of uh, like mass eyes on you. Yes. And the probably next time we see blade is going to be an Xbox platform. And that ecosystem is already sold. So what you needed to do was plant the seed for blade to be like, Oh shit, that's an Xbox game. Right. Even if you didn't see gameplay, it's like, oh, they got that down down the pipe because that's Absolutely. like the subconscious when you're making that purchasing decision, you're running down the timeline. Yes. What you're buying it for and what's to come. Good point. That's got to be an important factor in the decision, I think, because it's mm-hmm. a big, it's a big popular IP. So, uh, of course, they'll have Indiana mm-hmm. Jones as well. But what do you have to say? Case in point, you know, you you're all fired. 
I still think it's Bethesda because let's be honest, Maddie, if we did not get the dirt to this day, we would not know Indiana Jones was Xbox exclusive. We were shocked to learn the news that they made that exclusive behind the scenes, <laughs> right? So technically, Indiana Jones would be in the same boat if they was announced. It was announced right? the same way. Yeah, it was just under the... But that thing had more... It just... Not to interrupt your argument. No, please, please, please. It just shows how heightened it is that like Marvel's on this level that Xbox fans have wanted for a while. Like everyone's asking questions when Indiana Jones announced, like, is it going to be exclusive or not? Like mm-hmm. no one really knew. It's like, all right, whatever. Right. But when you go to Marvel game or if you have a Star Wars mm-hmm. game, I think it's a, another valuable lesson. Like mm-hmm. the branding's got to be there. I, I agree. I, 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 again, this is Bethesda. I agree. I, I agree. I, I just think this is part of the growing pains of transition and certain people still want to be able to push the button when they want to be able to push the button. And certain people now we know that is it Matt Booty now the head of um, He's the head of Xbox Game Studios and the Bethesda side of the content too. Maybe that transition plan is now being uh Fast forwarded to accelerate what they want as far as branding. <laughs> and they, I find it interesting the trailer that the Xbox trailer now comes out the next day for playing Xbox trailer logo yeah. the next day after all this. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to say? I don't blame her, man. Like, I, I, I feel like, yeah, if, if this was because of Bethesda, like, Xbox is probably pissed. They're like, what the fuck is this, man? <laughs> we, like I said, we on record know that Xbox when it comes to certain things in relating to Bethesda has recently got involved. I will just say that to try to make that relationship a more amenable. Again, not saying that there's beef. It's just that well, remember, they were big publishers. ZeniMax has been used to doing things their own way for a long time. When you are quiet, there is a chain of command. There is some changes and it's going to be a transition. I think that's what I feel this is. But to your point, no excuse you need to have this thing associated with you. So like you said, brand power, uh, future reservations, get it. You see what the zeitgeist is for this. You better get associated with your platform and know that's where you're getting it at. And I mean, case of point, look at ODA had that problem. Kojima had that problem. Oh yeah, you coming out here. Jeff going to tell you, and we're going to talk a bloviate for 15 minutes. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, got Game Studios logo at the front, right? That's, yes, the, yeah. that's the key. Huge that's the key. Maker, I just think for the fan base. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's going to be interesting how they handle with ABK as well. That's going to be the next yeah. chapter. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it doesn't look like it's 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 going to end anytime soon. Here's the next step: is that there's also the exclusivity game when it comes to like we haven't seen a legacy product come out that's like we you know, like oh is Fallout Five or uh, I think a better example like more upcoming is what's ID working on? Yes, is that going to be exclusive? Good right, point. like. We have yet to see like a consistently known IP with multiple releases get yes. put out under Xbox's watch. It's all been fortunately new IP for better or for worse. Yeah. With Starfield, Redfall, Hi-Fi Rush. Like we have yet to get that test run of like, oh, this has some history. Like yeah. where is it going? I mean, technically, you can make that argument for Hellblade too. In a right. way, how in a in a weird, I mean, Hellblade One did exist on PlayStation exclusively before. I mean, it, before it opened up. But yeah. I understand your point. You are right with like Fallout, like remaster, Oblivion remaster. Technically, I think if Oblivion's a remake, I think that's exclusive. Okay, like remaster though. Right, I, I'm with right. you all the way. I think all this stuff is exclusive outside of Elder Scrolls Online, new new thing. Right, mm-hmm. maybe that you know or. El- the, the Elder Scrolls Online team's new IP that may be MMO live service based. Do they make the exception there and say, you know what, we want that everywhere because it is live service, yeah, right? That, we- that's another tough one because you got like Halo Infinite, Sea of Thieves is huge. You've got True. Forza Horizon 5, that's huge. True. Like, do you really need all the other platforms when it comes to live service? And I, I mean, in certain cases, I point. think so. It's a good point. I guess my, my theory is with Tim Stewart in the sense of, it's got to be these zeitgeist type games where like Minecraft, Call of Duty, where it's just too big mm. to say you're going to limit that. Now, maybe with a new live service and a new thing, they say, OK, we can offset. We can't completely offset the PlayStation ba- fan base. But being that these are on PC as well, Steam and this as well, maybe they say because that the way they do in their platform ecosystem, that way they could justify it. But if you 
cop something like Call of Duty. Because remember, I, that was the mistake I made. I thought they were going to make Call of Duty exclusive. But we understand that these le- that is, I guess, considered a legacy title. just too big. Yeah, you know, to, to limit. So that's what it is. So, I, I mean, it'll be interesting about because they, they got themselves in this situation. I just want to see how they handle this on this case by case basis and what the determination is. Yeah. I, I don't foresee a ton of consistency, but I, I, I think at the end of the day, it just kind of matters for a lot of fans like what's coming to the platform and does it look Correct. good. And so, uh, I anticipate we won't have to wait long to find that out. I think we're going to get yeah. a developer direct and we'll get a lot more answers there on other games coming out much sooner than Blade. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Here. Here we go. What did I say there? Did I say something out of pocket? It was just funny. It was just funny when you said <laughs> something but sooner than coming to Blade. <laughs> I must sound like an asshole sometimes, and I don't even mean to. It's a lot. Sometimes you are naturally funny. You don't realize it. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts on Blade? Or should we move Ooh, on to our second one? Just excited, man. Can't wait, man. Just all, all I would say is just follow Dinga's profile on Twitter, man. He is so in his bag. He's so excited. I just see, you can tell this is a dream project. So I feel like we are going to get 110%. This means so much to him. I, you, you just got to follow his profile, bro. I'm telling you, he's, he's popping off. He's excited. Yeah. And he throws the best kick in the games industry I've seen so far. Like, bro, bro what was that? Yeah. That was like, that was out of left field. I was like, this guy's bro. been training for that moment. Like, that, yeah. the second he threw that kick, I was like, you want to see that. Yeah, I don't want no problems. I was like, I don't want no problems. And I heard he does got Capoeira as well. That boy is a beast. What? Yeah, he does Capoeira for, like, bro, leave him alone. No mess with Dinga. Let him, as he said, <laughs> let him cook. We're going to leave you alone, bro. That's, I ain't going to ask you no more where it's at. <laughs> he, yeah, he cracked. He actually responded to Aaron Greenberg when he put up the thing. Ah, oh, Greedy, that's what's up. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's all the answer I need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, bro- the brotherhood is there. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Our second news story is about Xbox Game Pass. It may be experimenting with free ads in particular regions of the world. Windows Central was reported that Xbox insiders are being surveyed about this idea as well. Tim Stewart has added again as he was exp- as he was speaking during the Wells Fargo TMNT summit. TM, I said TMNT. My Ninja Turtles are on Ninja here. Turtles summit. <laughs> <laughs> the Wells Fargo TMT summit last month. In an interview with Tweaktown, he explained his thoughts. Quote, for models like Africa or India, Southeast Asia, maybe places that aren't console first, you can say, hey, do you want to watch 30 seconds of an ad and then get two hours of game streaming? Africa is, you know, 50% of the population is 23 years old or younger with a growing disposable income base, all with cell phones and mobile devices. Not a lot of high-end disposable income, generally speaking. So we can go in with our own business models and say there's millions and millions of gamers we would never have been able to address there, and now we can go in with our business models, end quote. Adam or Zach writes in, Hello, Dukes, with rumors circulating that Xbox might start introducing a free ad-supported tier to Game Pass where you watch the ads to earn maybe two hours of game time. What are your thoughts on this matter? If it does get added, I hope that they don't pull a Netflix or Disney Plus and dramatically increase the original paid ad-free tier in an effort to strong-arm new or returning customers into spending more money. Thank you, and seeing Cog's enthusiasm for the rumored Wu-Tang Clan game has brightened my day. Thank you, Adam, for writing in. Hey, so Cog, what's up? Game Pass. Watch, watch an ad get two hours of game time. Are you in on this or no? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This this is clearly that region play. And Tim, look. It, it is the right call for regions that are not console first. It, it is it, it, because you're never going to you're never going to sell an Xbox console in certain regions. We just got to be real about it. There's certain regions that just not console heavy and they do just use mobile phones or they just do use just PC. Kind of what we talked about with uh, Mina when she was talking about their breaking in. That's the Trojan horse. The, the fact that they're going services and a platform is how they're going to get their growth. That's why we cannot marry them only the console sales as the metric. Not saying that console sales are not important. We don't, we want them to improve. We're not saying that that's not important, but we do realize what the strategy is. And look, you give a region that access that's on mobile that says, yo, you ain't got to pay. Just watch these two ads. You get two hours of streaming. You could go stream the new Hellblade or you go stream. And we have to admit streaming has improved. We're seeing it all the time. I'm hearing people all the time like, yo, bro, I can play, you know, full games. You talk about your Logitech G Cloud and all this. Like, people are streaming and having more success at it, right? So 
as far as the tech is concerned. The key is going to be the market penetration. Can how how attractive are they going to make this to this region? How are they going to be able to implement it? Is the latency there? Is mm-hmm. it going to be in those regions, not not in our ideal situations where you have a data center close by, you know, how is it going to be in Africa? Where's your data centers at? Are, you know, are, are you have enough cloud blades there? So interesting. I do see this as something coming as far as like us domestic. Um, I'd be surprised. Did I say that they won't introduce it? I'm curious if they do, how much success it would actually have. That would be a metric I would like to track and see if they're getting success with that. Will people be like, yo, I'll try it in this manner. You know, I don't know. I don't know. That, that, that's To me, I still feel console marker is saturated. I feel that PC is the way as far as the additional growth that they're going to get. And only way pop console growth increases is exclusive games, in my opinion. For the console guy, you've got to give them the reason Right. Okay. Starfield. Okay. Cool. Hellblade. Okay. All right. Avowed. South. Like mm-hmm. that kind. Oh, Call of Duty. Okay. Diablo. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Then you get the console guys to be like, all right, I'm gonna buy a console because the exclusive. But if, but again, that's a pie. That's that's circumference is the same people you've been fighting for every generation. Right. You're just gonna get some people that had a PlayStation and Nintendo now to come over. Okay. Fine. But it's still a limited pie. You've got to go outside of your circle to regions that would never get in your ecosystem, thus PC, thus cloud. That's how I see it. So we'll see if it works and how they implement it. Is it obnoxious? <laughs> you know what I'm Like, how, how is it going to be implemented? There's a lot of questions, but I, I do get it for other regions. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, um, I'm like of two minds on it. Like, I think for an entry level thing, it's a good idea. But I'm, I share Adam's concern in kind of pulling down uh, the paid tiers um, that kind of try to stay away from that. But I've warned people for a long while. I said, beware evil villain Microsoft. They said they're not far from creeping around the corner and jacking up some prices and doing some things that you're not a fan of. And I I love their current good guy moniker. I hope they keep it for as long as possible. Um, I think they, they do understand value and they do understand they're the competitor brand, if you will. That's uh, the challenger brand, sorry, challenger not competitor brand. brand. Shout out to Peter. And they're, they're kind of, you know, fighting the uphill battle, if you will. Um, I get all of that, but eventually they're going to gain momentum. And I, I think that's going to be starting right now, heading Ooh. into next year. I feel like they've had a really successful year in the terms of like visibility and big games and big announcements. And like now you have the Activision Blizzard merger done. It's not clouding anything else happening around your company. Hopefully leaks are a thing of the past because of that. And that you can keep some of your big reveals a secret, like what happened with Blade. Um, and that leading into 2024 with some, like some big Activision games, both like multi-plat and exclusive, uh, whatever. But that is just cooking up next because now we know like machine games might be showing off Indiana Jones next year. And then mm-hmm. uh, you also have id who should be showing off what they're working on next soon and so on and so forth. Like they're primed to just keep on rolling. And once they start rolling, uh, that's where, you know, just like PlayStation, eventually you make some really tough business decisions because everyone wants to be Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Nintendo's on this whole other echelon this whole other stratosphere even where they just operate, they do their thing. They'll sell you Pokemon Scarlet and Violet completely fucking borked and they'll sell 10 million units of that in three days and laugh in your face while they run to the bank. Every company wants that luxury. Not to give you just bullshit because Nintendo does make a lot of great games and honestly Scarlet and Violet, if it were technically sound, like would be probably one of the best Pokemon games ever just by like what it's trying to do. Like I really do like that game but um like they are they are given the benefit of the doubt by a diehard dedicated fan base xbox just has the smallest circle of that so they need ways to grow it getting people in for free like hey you don't even got to pay a dollar now to get in the game pass you just got to watch an ad and then you could play for two hours um those i think that's just going to kind of rope them in that's the hope it's like oh i'm getting kind of tired of these ads when i'm playing these games man oh well ten dollars a month like i'm here Okay, fifteen dollars a month. I'm here. Like they're creating tiers because what they're trying to do is instead of adding new tiers at the top, which I don't think they'll ever do because they have ultimate. They're trying to add tiers at the floor to get you in. 
And so they're, they're going to probably go through with this. It's a matter of when, not, oh, are they going to do it? They're, they're going to. Um, I think it'll start off with global, you know, other, other countries around the world because they have the U.S. market. They don't want to shake that up. So they're going to target, like, honestly, maybe even Japan. Like, just low, like any company, any country you want a Trojan horse, pretty mm-hmm. much. Just slide on in. Hey, look, I know PlayStation Nintendo got something good going on, but guess what? You get it for free over here. You just got a little bit of your time is all we need. And we got all these great things on Game Pass. Did you know that? So thanks to, to what's her name again? Mina Kato. Like, you know, just, just get us some nice JRPGs in there. And that's your Trojan horse into uh, Japan. So I, I feel like this is a nice sneaky tool for them from the business side of things. Uh, obviously, though, this is thinking about streaming and X cloud gaming and um, you know, that has to be ready in these regions of the world to play these games. And it's definitely got better. Like I stream my games. Where is it right here? A ton. All right. Oh, I'm a Logitech G Cloud always on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's get, it's gotten way better um, where it's more feasible. This vision might be a couple of years away from that, though. But that time's in just right for this next gen hybrid. So um, I, I think they try. If I were to guess, I think they spend Ooh. this gen building up as much goodwill as possible, building up mm-hmm. as much of a base as possible to have their, their PlayStation 5 moment. $10 here. Thank you. Yeah, like, that, yeah that's, that's my prediction. Oh, man. Let's see. Let's see. They, like I said, they, they got to penetrate these regions first. So we'll see what happens. And if it catches on, yeah. then, you know, things may change. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cog. It's time for the Game Pass Pick of the Week. Not a fan, but I'll lie. <laughs> I knew you was. <laughs> yeah, this was a surprise. Um, shout out to 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 a lot of people who shout out to solve a lot of people who've been on me about my slander of this game. A lot of people had it as a game of the year contender one year, and yes, I played it and I liked it. This is Vampire Survivors, but. They came out with a legacy pack, and it's uh, called, what was it, Legacy of the Moon Spell. So, look, the, tr- the classic tropes are there, which is, you know, survivor, roguelite, you kill everything on the screen as you can, you try to survive, and each level up you do, you get the loop of adding additional things to your arsenal, whether it be things that circle your character, things that add more DPS, more, f- more speed. It's a new map, new characters, kind of a... Uh... All right, this way they got me, Matty. Kind of a little cognito ninja martial arts kind That's of That's all vibe. it takes to That's betray your take. morals. They, 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 they got, bro, it is the perfect, I'm in the doctor's office. I'm on the wrong ally. <laughs> All right, let me fire something. Up. I can't play something extensive with, I can't do Starfield all the time unless I know, like this is me with Portable. I can't do my AAA stuff unless I know it's going to be hours and hours wait, like a, maybe an airport or maybe you stuck somewhere and you're like, all right, I could bring in this bad boy. I can get invested because I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to stop. I don't want to press. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you, sometimes you need what I call it. Don't laugh. This is a super pause. You need those bus off games. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you just need some little quick bus off joint. You know what I'm saying? You just get in there. Bang, bang. Out. And then you, all right, Doc, I'm ready. I'm ready to see. All right, Mr. Cognito, Doc's ready to see. Okay, cool, right? Just those quick, you know, driver, number 66, you're ready to call the driver's license, you know, DMV, you, that type of game. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I got into a little addictive state with it. New map, new biome. Bro, it's super addicting, Maddie. You, you, have you tried it yet? Have you tried have. it? Okay. It, it, it is something about it that it's just... Okay, all right, I got this. I can keep going. I got five things going on. Then I ain't going to front when the hecticness of the screen of everything coming at you is pure math. Is it game of the year level stuff? No, Phil Spencer. I'm still going to fight you on that. Me and you had the argument face to face. No, it's not that. But it is an addictive game that to me represents old school core sensibilities of why we got into gaming it ultimately always comes down to the fun and it is fun in that regard is it going to stop maddie from playing Baldur's gate no is it going to stop him from playing his persona and all that stuff no look look look, 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 yes let's go let's go come on let's fight (laughs) all i'm saying is my man phil woke up this year and i saw his top three most played games of the year 
my man number one plays a lot of games yes games a lot of efficient. hours in starfield a lot yes. of hours in diablo 4 yes so what hours in pillars of eternity what's going on yeah. there oh man i didn't <laughs> see his beloved in there and that exactly made me very happy i was like phil I get it. Last year was you were on the road a lot, a lot of FTC work. Like you yes. needed something on the go. You needed to do you got it. You woke up this year though. You went, there are games to play, sir. You helping my argument. I'm I'm telling you, all them dudes capping, look where Vampire Survivors out, and none of that was on their number one, number two, number three this year Xbox and review. So I knew you wasn't playing it. It's a bus off. <laughs> it's a quick jump in, jump out, and get back to the real stuff. <laughs> so again, all jokes aside, nice distraction, fun game. DLC is only two bucks. Like a dollar fifty for this DLC, bro. I mean, it's a smart, it's a really smart business model. Like they just, with all that popularity, they're just like, well, what's a couple bucks? Why not, right? Yeah. Like it goes a long way for them. A little jump up, and they got like I said, new characters. Again, to me, it's very Shaolin themed, and it, I like the little joint. It, it's fun. It's fun. So again, if you got a little time, check out the little the, the DLC for it. It is a lot of fun, and they got co op also as well in the, in the game. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's one that uh, definitely fits Game Pass pick of the week. Nice pick yeah. up, play, pick move up on play. with your day during the mm-hmm. holidays, all that fun stuff. Holiday, little wintry biome too. Feel get 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 oh, some little high- yeah, you know, little winter, a new map, Maddie. Wintry, fa- more fun. Come on, man, get a shot. No, I don't think <laughs> I will. that was hilarious. <laughs> There's no shot I do, but I encourage the audience to do so. Stop playing Baldur's Gate and for was it the finals? See, you, yeah. you too, that AI got you. You you love AI now. <laughs> <laughs> they made the Todd Howard, Brian Fargo super AI man. Like that's it. I'm trying to get you back to the human element where one guy made a game and you won't play AI. See, see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> All right, we got one final question before we're out of here. Just a little. Mm-hmm. For us, at least, like a tone setter for our departure, right? This is it. Neo JD writes, fellas, how's the first half of 2024 looking for you guys right now? Is it feeling kind of empty or is that just me? Thanks, and I have a cog's not going to play any games this holiday break because he'll be too busy playing the Tekken demo again. Kind of vacation. It seems like he's right on point. <laughs> I mean, he kind of exposed me right there. But this week is going to be real rough. Demo, I believe, is tomorrow as the date of recording. Yeah. Yeah, bro, I'm I'm going super hard. Like, what? Yeah. Is it the full demo. roster for this demo? Do you know? No, no, no. I think it's four characters. I think it's Jin, Kazuya, Paul, and Nina. Um, about the first mission in the campaign, so they're showing that. Oh, um, and I think the I don't think they need online fighting in this. Mm. I, like, remember, I've been part of the um closed network beta test, which is only online. So this is now an official, almost what I consider the single player demo and a little practice mode kind of thing. So this was be for you to get in, in pocket. Obviously, it's going to suck. You don't get your Lars or your characters that or, you know, your man Claudio and stuff like that. I don't think they're part of that roster, like how they were all for us in the yeah, head to head. Do your gameplay, though. And it's like, Bro, you might be it might be worth a shot for me while I'm in there. Sick. And you trust me, Jin is a problem too. got a mix of the devil Jin in Jin flashy stuff so yeah so that's it's gonna be it but combos bro when he like <sighs> transformed this devil version you saw like the laser ray just comb up the Whoa. entire the entire arena i was like yeah i gotta i have to give kazooie yeah. a shot here man like he's looking pretty nice Dominant, i've never bro. played like all my mains are always like the outside pick so i'm like is this the game where i finally i'm that guy like yeah i'm one of the main story guys like Play i'm the, the main villain. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. The let's go bro i'm telling you it's, it's very power addicting. The Mishimas, uh, playing the Mishimas, the electric wind god fist, old guys that use those moves, the hell sweeps, dominant play style. And mm-hmm. they got so much new stuff that they don't have to rely on it. So, yeah. And, and when you see all that flash shooting lasers, transforming the devil, doing all this, it's, 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 it's anime heaven, bro. Like they, <laughs> some people, some of the purists are getting mad now because now oh, Tekken no. is becoming more popular. And, the catering to the anime crowd. I don't like it. And I'm where like, though? I don't feel like I see that no. at all. There's a lot outside of, of Lars. Like Lars is the de facto anime yeah, guy. Like you can talk about hair and, and yeah, his yeah. style and yeah, the style. Yeah, you know. 
it's more of a tech and deep cut Reddit forum kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Where mm. like some of the whole art, like remember the purist just likes it to be just a traditional martial, martial arts. arts. Yeah. yeah. No special, no lace. Now, if you notice, you know, look at um, your man, it's the QBQ or the French guy. He's got the swords and the thing and mm. whatever. So they're introducing little things that some people feel, but, but I feel it just, it looks good, man. It looks good. Anyway. Mm. To Neil's question, yeah, for me, obviously, the top of the year for me is packed. Like Tekken 8 in itself, January 26, stops everything. So I'm just like, oh, my God, you got that. Then I got, like, I I bloviated at the time. Infinite Wealth is looking like it's going to be an early contender for me. I'm saying it right now. RGG is in a silly bag and it just seemed Hawaii is the perfect setting. And then Kiryu and I'm, you know, I'm, that's my man right now. That's my man. These are my brothers now. I, I, I ride for both of them, especially if you play Dragon God. I got so much love for your man. Like one of the most emotional endings to a game. I will say that. It, 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 with you. Mm. No, bro, and you know, you know, I came in ready to hate. Yeah, I get it. And I was like, nah, this dude, he he he's official. Mm. I like what he he what's the kid say? He stands on business. <laughs> that boy stands on business. So yeah, so I got that. And then February, um, even though it's not Xbox, it's I Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm, I ain't missing that. And we got to see what else comes up at the top of the year. But just those alone, just those two alone. And you know, there's gonna sneak in some Game Pass stuff. There's gonna be some stuff that creep out. At the top of that, and then, let's be honest, we still there's a chance Hellblade might. If we hear it about South of Midnight might come out, and maybe Avowed still might come out or something like Indiana that, Jones. Even it's like, yeah, might be earlier. It might be earlier, right? So, who's to say? I, I think first half of 2024 for me, I got more than enough to keep me all right. And actually, I'm glad right now I'm okay because I can play catch up a little bit, you know, with certain stuff. So. Which is my own thing is I got to get all this game going. <laughs> That's why I started the whole cross save thing because I didn't want to start over. <laughs> I was yeah. like, no, 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 I need to keep my character. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. was a big thing. So now Baldur's Gate's cooking. Yeah. And who knows when Starfield might pop out? Well, it might be too early for Shattered Space, you think? When do you, when you think we get Shattered Space? If you had to guess. Shattered just, Space? I'm going to guess. Oh, you know, I think it depends see? on because they're talking about new features every six months. So I feel like Shattered Space has to be like late 2024, or probably early 2025. Okay. Like I think Fair enough. maybe because of the design criticism, Starfield God, they might even push back. I, mm. It depends on two things. Like they can either push back the expansion to focus on free updates to just get the ball rolling, or they can fold a lot of massive updates right. and kind of delay the more meaningful stuff that would happen mm-hmm. every six weeks. Yeah, into the big expansion and have it arrive earlier. I I'm not entirely sure which way mm-hmm. they go about it. Makes though sense. I think I think they take the quickest route because mm. I think they understand. I I have to imagine they understand. Like okay, we have a strong success here, but like we need to kind of like lift it back up, win people back, and, yes, and, and like have this be like a thing we could be proud of for years. Oh, and I just thought about Neo JD. We forgetting the biggest thing that out of all the announcements, we was all surprised. We was all popping bottles. One of the things that we said should happen didn't happen, which was ABK implementation and stuff. We know, <laughs> bro, all those ABK joints, the back catalog, the new joints, yeah. like when Diablo pops in, I don't know when that DLC, because they're coming out with a um, thing. Summer next year, right? They bro, sit there and talk about it. When they, I already know, I'm waiting for, um, <laughs> what you go, Retro Rebound, you in trouble. When they do them Spider-Man games, <laughs> you in trouble you in trouble like that all that catalog i don't know i'm just yeah. saying i mean it'll be a good problem to have i uh yeah. this year was really good to retro rebound there was just a lot of stuff to dig into um because there was so many freaking remakes and remasters and like back catalog things um, mm-hmm. so it was a lot of fun or like big series like final fantasy getting like a new numbered entry so yeah mm-hmm. it was it was a lot for me first half of 2024 what you got, what you got? I don't think it looks particularly light if you like JRPGs, yes. as Cog already talked about. Like, of course, I'm with you, like Tekken or Sona 3 Reload. Like, of course, oh, you know, that's done. Yeah. Bro, like, every done. trailer they dropped for that. They dropped a new one at the Game Awards, and I'm like, oh, man, like, this is going to be so good. Like, ah. I, I just can't wait because I. I've only played Persona 3 in the portable version. I'm going to play FES. That might be one of my holiday break games. I'm kind of toying with the idea. Like, I, I am so non-committal right now to anything like i'm just I like I don't, like i gotta know which way the wind's gonna take me once the break yep. happens like 
and then I'll just decide and go in that direction. But yeah, Persona 3 Reload, I'm really looking forward to. You mentioned Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, I'd say my most anticipated game, though, the most anticipated like dragon's dogma 2 like that oh yeah bro yeah, like, you won me over dude just i i you know what i love is that they've kept so much of the spirit of the original and i i was totally okay and ready to accept them like modernizing this in ways that kind of lost the charm because i was like yeah like capcom's on a whole other level like i don't blame them that they kind of want to bring in a new base is kind of a risky endeavor but then you know man like they're they're sticking to it, through and through and doubling down, like really adding some meaningful additions to that game. Um, where I I can't wait. Like I that's what I saw, and I went, wow, they went above and beyond. Like anything I expected. You know, Dragon's Dogma was already a treat, but like this feels like a whole other level. Whole other level. So that's the definitely top of my most anticipated games. Otherwise, um, I'm kind of happy right now. It's a little chill. I I, I, I grant granted, I speak from the perspective of someone who reviews a lot of games. So I understand my bias and completely admit that before saying, I think the industry needs to chill and space it out a little bit. I think when you are Sega and you are dropping Yakuza and Persona 3 Reload in the same week, you are cannibalizing your own audience. I think when you are Grand Blue Fantasy, uh, I forgot the last part of the name, and you are a really ambitious JRPG that's been in development for a long ass time. And you are releasing in the thick of a ton of JRPGs. Like, why? Why? Like, if you're Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you're kind of away from everything. So you're you're good. Um, but yeah, I just, it's like, what's announced for March? Tell, tell <laughs> me, what's announced for March? Why are you all coming out end of January, beginning of February? Um, I, get, I know we get these hot spots in yeah. gaming where the releases just stack up. But there are so there's still even when our industry is at, at its biggest, there's still so many underutilized months. July yeah. and August, for the most part, were vacant. We were busy in August because we had Starfield two weeks early. But otherwise, mm-hmm. like uh, we had Baldur's Gate three and we had Sea yeah. of Stars. Like there was, and those were like more end of the month things. Mm-hmm. So, like I just feel like we got to use more of the calendar here. So I hope that the first half kind of like we could have a lot of content, but let's spread it out. Let's spread yeah, it out. You. I'm with you. I need, I need, I need some pace. <laughs> it's just, it, well, it's an the insane. Is, pace. Is, it, the, the biggest problem with gaming used to be, I don't have the money for all of this. Yes. Now you have the, the, the hobby evolving. People got the money. They don't have the fucking time. Every game is so big, so long, preach, preach. so high commitment. Like, and by the way, Xbox, you'll do this too with like Starfield. Like that's a high commitment game, oh, for yeah. example. Oh, yeah. Um, you can't just like, ah, oh, try it out. Like, you got to go all in. And so every, and now it's demanding this level of unattainable perfection from everything because if yes. you're like slightly decent, like this year a show like Immortals of Avium got blown out of the water. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? You're 7 out of 10. Like, you get, you cannot afford to be just okay mm-hmm. nowadays. Fair. It's it, And it's unfortunate, man, because mm-hmm. like, I think it just comes down to time and time is a precious resource. It is a luxury that should always be considered when buying a game, but I mean, I just think these these publishers are not recognizing like, yo, if we just give this time, like our game could do way better if we just put it in a healthier pocket. Uh, but I think they also worry like, well, the money is going to be spent by then. Right, right, so right. When we lose out on sales and yeah. I get it, but I think at that point you're overthinking it. Like just people, if your game looks good, I mean, ever since we were kids, right? Like, oh, I got to save up for that. Like I got to make mm-hmm. sure I get mm-hmm. that, right? Yeah. So I feel like that doesn't leave us if your game is good. So that's how I'm, I'm viewing it, you know, first mm-hmm. half of 2024 looks pretty packed for me, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't care if it were a little more barren and spaced yeah. out. I'd be OK with that because we already have our, a bunch of highlights in the first four months. So absolutely. And I will say first if half. Hellblade 2 happens to sneak out in that first half, oh, boy, it's going to be I don't know where I'm going to be at. <laughs> that yeah. is highly anticipated for me. Yeah, I feel like Towerborn will be like one of Xbox's first half games. Yeah, um, I feel that I feel, I feel like that's one. And then. Mm. Yeah, you you look at you because you look at this year. I mean, you got and I know Redfall isn't a sexy title, but you when you were at the top of the year and you're like, oh, we got Hi-Fi Rush just now, mm-hmm. and we're gonna get Redfall later in the year, and we're gonna get yeah. Minecraft Legends a little bit before that. It was like, okay, we got a busy first half. Like mm-hmm. going into 2024, we don't really know right. anything about their first half at all, which is why I think a direct is so needed because like the yeah. second bit of, biggest piece of feedback we talk about the Marvel stuff. It's like mm-hmm. the first half of the year does exist. Yes. So. First half and when do you start implementing ABK is my, my big questions yeah. for first half as well. Yeah. So we'll see if they answer it all. We actually have a 
full episode of Defining Duke, taking a look at Xbox's 2023 and into 2024 that'll come out during our holiday break. But Cog, this is it. Yeah. Yeah. This is our final recording yeah. for me of 2023. How are we feeling, man? Feeling good, man. Good. Yeah, look, man, f- uh, fantastic year, you know, overall. You know, I felt that, like, we grew a lot <laughs> together as the tag team in the realm of the Dukes. We've been through some stuff. But I think we we kind of... I think we started sort of carving our path more as far as, you know, who we are, what we're going to be as a show. And I want to just shout the realm of the Dukes, man. Just the, the the consistent, you know, positivity, the comments that uplift, the hashtags on Twitter. I see us tag all the time. They're utilizing it. They're going out. And then just like someone had a comment on Patreon that had me laugh. And it was, it was kind of comparative, but I did like what they say in reference to the Dukes. It was like, this is what Maddie and Cog say, you know, health is wealth, this is that. Like, you know, it's kind of funny. It was like a contrast with, with, with LSF fan. But it, we, what I like about it, it is it gives us our identity, right? And what we do and, and how people really gra- gravitate. And I love, I want to shout you out because I, I love what you incorporate, the human element, what's going on with ourselves, you know, real stuff. And then people actually giving feedback to that and, and how it, it's receptive to them. And how it's helped them and stuff like that. And we include that that part of our lives. I think that's pretty cool. And, um, you know, again, shout out to Spotify. It was very nice of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To partner with something up and coming and, or work with, you know, in general. Um, but, uh, yeah, shout out to LSM fam. You know, all the shows, all, all the crew. Obviously, we've done the crossovers, Constellation. Obviously, the Sacred Boys punching up and that whole crew. And, you know, look, you know, sky's the limit. I think that... Um, we're still hitting our stride. We still got more things to do. Still would like some, if I had a, 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 a what is it, the resolution, you know, I would like uh, some 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 guests to come through. Don't be, you know, don't be nervous, man. Come through to the yeah. Dukes. And trust me, you're going to have one of the, you know, you're going to have a good time. You're going to be respected. And I think it'll be a fantastic collaboration because trust me, we go hard over here, man. We, uh-huh. we, we go hard. And, I, and, I, and the dedication here shows. And again, again, shout out to you, Mr. Matty Plays, always making it exciting, the notes and all that and the input that we give. It's really cool. And, and it's all, oh, shout out to you on this, though. I don't give you a flower. This is all about Your me. Your thumbnail sorry, joints. Right? In collaboration with Dustin, we really took it to the next level this year. Like, y'all had me in Dominican Barrett. Y'all had me... <laughs> With the snow, with the hoodie, look like I'm about to drop a new album. Yeah, that you know was what I'm saying. Like the thumbnails of Duke this year was on was A plus, like a lot of times. It, it was really S tier level stuff, man. Really goats level stuff. So I, I want to shout y'all out for that because I don't care. I'm like, I, I'm literally for those who don't know beside the road. I'm literally the photo model here. I'm like, what y'all mm-hmm. want me to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, because it's fun. And it always comes up when I see the final result. I always laugh. I'm like, yo, they yeah. did that. That was dope. Yeah, we kind of accidentally set a standard for ourselves. Like, I, yes. I didn't even plan on it. I was like, let's just try using our faces. Cause, like, that was the thing is I knew we were putting together a good show, but like, there's tons of good stuff that exists on YouTube. It was like, how do we stand out? And so, like, we were talking about Xbox missing Final Fantasy or something like that. I was like, okay, let's just, let's just make me look like Cloud. And I asked yes. you, I was like, hey, is it cool if we make you bear? And you're like, yeah, let's do it. I was like, okay, all right, let's see how it goes. And like, that, a lot of people were like, holy shit. And Bro. I was like, all right, let's, do it again and we just yeah. had like a good stretch and yeah um i like it because i think it sets the vibe for our show like yes we definitely have serious conversations but like even when we're in the thick of a debate we're kind of still laughing while we're going about it and i feel like our thumbnails capture that spirit i think that's really important because i don't know where i think some people coming into our show at first were like really like fucking ready and jacked up and ready to go man i was like okay let's just like i hope like we bring that demeanor of like yeah easy easy yes chill like calm down man like it's yeah. it's serious but like take it down a notch and uh yeah so I, I appreciate your kind words man of course i couldn't do any of this without you you know i need a co-host who's all in who's who's ready to help me out in a moment's notice which you definitely have been from dd to ddu and i appreciate you and, and and really all you do for us you are the energy guy the energy energizer bunny really right <laughs> like you 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 get us going and um and that's why the audience loves you so yeah, I appreciate you just being Thanks. here every week, even when you went through. I mean, we talk about this in our final, final episode, but like with what you went through health wise, like to to push through and persevere and still be here each and every week is phenomenal. Um, so you're the real soldier here. I'm, I'm happy to put together the show to let you shine like the star that you are. Truly, oh, uh, you so. deserve it. That was I mean, that's why I picked you. I was like, look, I, this guy deserves a platform. Like, let's let's give it to him. So that's why it's always yeah, love, brother. always. Of course. And so. Oh, no. 
Thank you to the audience for tuning in. Um, this is definitely a really good year for us. We we appreciate you, you know, lifting us up to the to the next level uh, for for really um, pushing us from like uh, we're just this kind of middling show to like real serious contenders for like number one Xbox show. Uh, we uh, have a long ways to go, but we we appreciate it nonetheless. And uh, I I got to say also I, I I appreciate the dialogue we can have because there was a, a part in our year where it was kind of like spotty, a little combative, and um, that that's fine that's normal because we're going to respond to feedback but it was kind of getting out of hand and i like how we talked about it in like one final episode it kind of settled down and since then like the comments have been really good and like even for example one comment i saw that stuck with me is like some people someone said it was like why are there so many people in here trying to write when like about like console war shit when it doesn't match the tone of the show or mm. response to anything that's been said it had a lot of thumbs up and i was like that's the kind of feedback i feel like we're missing and by the way not just our space but like the console conversation spaces yes. most people are like arguing with thoughts in their heads more than anything we have said yes. and um i just appreciate the audience kind of being there is like I'm like one of those people, I put a little more pressure on my audience in the sense of like, look, if you want the positive space and you want the active, engaging, great community, like you got to be a part of it. Like you can't just sit back. Otherwise, they'll they'll gobble you up. Yeah. And so I just appreciate that uh, when we had those talks that the audience was as receptive as they could have easily been like, all right, I'm Ooh. out, like blowing Real. these guys off. They're annoying or they're ridiculous or they need too much from us. So just thank you for being a part of our success on a communal level too. It, it goes an extremely long way when you're active and engaged. And it doesn't mean you can't be critical of us. Like we've always said that, but like, we just appreciate those of you who, who, when you do have something critical to say, you put it in a, a well-spirited way that yeah. conveys to us, like you care about the Bro. product, you care about the show because we read every, I think that's one thing we hold ourselves accountable. Mm. We'll read any bit of criticism that comes our way on the show. Um, absolutely, because I think it's only fair that if we're going to laugh at write-ins we get and joke with you guys that if you <laughs> have something you want to take us to task for, that's what makes the show interesting. Like, you get yeah. to do that. You get to literally be like, hey, what the hell was this? And like, you don't have to write a comment. You can just come to us and write it to us on Patreon, not to encourage you to sign up to get your feedback heard, but like, you can literally mm-hmm. write to us and just be like, hey, why did you say this here? And like, we'll answer. Like, that's, that's yeah. always how we rock. Yeah, so, absolutely. And that's why I love. I love even at the start of the show, we have, I have some hey corrections, hey correct criticism, stuff like that. that. That's all healthy. That dialogue is important. But what you said is key, which is having the ability to have those respectful conversations where no one's being disrespectful. And the other key to me, which is why I love the fighting group, is because we still maintain the fun. And I think yeah. that's what's missing. Everything doesn't have to be a debate show. Everything has doesn't have to be contentious. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. don't get the expectation, man. Like I, yeah. I, I think part of it's from like sports radio, which I enjoy. Yes. Like they get fired up, they yell at each other. Yeah. Sports like, teams. The whole different beast here. Like I yeah. like again, I, I think games are fun. I think because the industry is growing, we just lose sight of we lose sight fun of why we here, here, brother. It's supposed to be video games are supposed to be fun. We supposed to be talking about, and that's why I kind of like the games play segment. Like, yo, what you playing? I, right, I'm playing this. All right, cool. Guaranteed what? lighthearted segment. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what this is about. That's why we all got into this because we picked up a controller and it was that connection between the, the mind, this body, soul, and that screen. And you're like, yo, I'm having a time of my life. I want other people to know about X, Y, Z. That's what it's about. All right. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, just thank you for a great 2023. We're going to go rest and recharge and be back full of energy in, I think, the second week of January. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see you when we see you. Uh, Cog, the hashtag to wrap things up here. What are we doing? We doing DD 2023. Uh, yo, right. yeah, I was just yeah. I was thinking a year in DD. Yeah, That's really what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, it has to be, right? So if you got this be. far, you want to let us know your thoughts on the episode, use the hashtag DD2023. Let us know what you're thinking. Twitter, I'm at G7Status. Cog is at Lord Cognito. You can also tag us in the comments down below on YouTube if you'd like. By all means, we're happy to hear from you. Give us your thoughts on the episode. With that, take excellent care of yourselves for those celebrating. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a happy holiday season. And of course, again, we'll be around in um, the next couple of weeks for multiple episodes of Defining Duke and Defining Duke Ultimate. So you'll not miss a beat at all, but we in our current state will be out of office. So... Take great care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time around for episode 157, technically, of Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast. Peace out. 
Defining Duke, an Xbox podcast, is a product and trademark of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC and is recorded from the United States of America. The show is conceived by Matthew Mr. Matty Play Schroeder and me, Colin Moriarty, and is written and produced by Matthew Schroeder. Maddie's co-host is Barry Lord Cognito Eversley. Defining Duke's executive producer is Dustin Furman, and the show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. As you know, all of Last Stand Media's shows, including Defining Duke, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer support level on Patreon, and we're thankful for your kindness and generosity. 